Christians. You're not a do Christian. Do we not have a responsibility? You're not a Christian. Do we not have a responsibility? Yes, to preach to them and to tell them. To stand together. To tell them. And preach to these children in love. This is very not loving. In hate. My brother was very He's loving. Not loving, sir. You're, my brother was this very is loving. An act of hate. No. And there is no hate in Jesus Wrong. Christ. Wrong. So, sirs, I rebuke you. It's not working. I We're still standing. It's not working. It's not working. I rebuke you. Not working. It's Jesus. not working. Uh, my name is Reuben Israel. I live in Los Angeles. I am a Christian and uh, I'm known what's uh, called a street preacher. Uh, born and raised in Los Angeles. And so uh, uh, we enjoy the beautiful weather that God has given this uh, part of the country and we take advantage of it. I live in a city that uh, has a large population, the second largest in our nation. And so we take advantage of the, uh, the area that we live in. This particular banner, we just came back from Mardi Gras with it. And uh, most of my banners are all filthy and dirty. But this one in particular has a nice slice on it right here from a knife. Uh, compliments of an uh, angry sinner. And so we'll take the uh, knife on the banner any day of the week than having a brother get slit on his chest. So, you know, just a regular banner to some people, but uh, after revival breaks out, this one will go in the Smithsonian and uh, be placed someplace inside of a glass case. This one here, these are some of the old guys that we used to have in the 80s because the homos would spit on us so much and we didn't know where the AIDS virus came from. We used to actually preach with these on so that the spit wouldn't go into our mouth and our face and our eyes. And so, uh, you know, it looks like just a regular guy's garage, but uh, unfortunately uh, uh, those ones there are uh, just in case they spit on us. Different megaphones for different uh, events I go to. Sometimes the uh, police tell us we can't use a megaphone. And so we got the old trusty cheerleader horn. That's not a megaphone. Uh, we preach in the streets. There are some street preachers that just see a corner and then they preach uh, and there's nobody walking around. Uh, we not only preach in the streets, we go to where people are. The marketplace, uh, big events, uh, and that we preach. We take church to the unbelievers. And uh, uh, in our civilization, we're known as street preachers. And we plow the fields in Los Angeles. Any big events in LA, uh, we preach at. College campuses locally, we preach at. On the beach, in Hollywood, uh, you name it, uh, we go out there and present the God of the Bible. Today is the day of salvation. Today, God in His Word is in your face. Some of you are looking for a sign. Well, here's your sign. Your priest has deceived you. Your church has lied to all of you. Show me where in the Bible a baby needs to be baptized. The Bible says that child belongs to God. Your religion says that baby is demon possessed. That's how wrong your Catholic church is. Let's put theology aside for a second. Let's not talk about how you pray and worship Mary. Let's talk about how your priests 
are molesting you kids. Your priests are touching your kids and your church is hiding those priests. Your church is sending you to hell. Nowhere in the Bible do you pray to the Virgin Mary. Have you guys lost your mind? Hey. Don't push me. Don't push me. Watch yourself, old guy. Hey. Watch hey. yourself, old fella. Hey. Oh, Just don't push into us, okay? You Just have him. Don't lean on me. That's all. You're coming in against the kids. We have no problem. Yeah, I'm, I'm concerned about the kids. When are you concerned about kids when your church is molesting them? When are you concerned about kids, you phony? Where in the Bible do we find the word purgatory? Anybody? Where in the Bible? Where in the Bible do we find the word purgatory? Where in the Bible do you find the word Trinity? Where in the Bible? I call it Godhead. I don't use the word Trinity. Okay. I use the word Godhead in reference to the okay, three being one. I don't understand why you have so much hate towards Catholics. Aren't I you hate them because I'm telling them the truth about your church, which is sending them to hell. No, our church your, isn't sending anybody Jesus to hell. Jesus said to feed the sheep, not molest them. Okay. Your priests are molesting every these priest, kids. Well, you're hiding them. Your church is hiding them. No, Remember no Mahoney, that. Roger Mahoney? They're He's hiding those anything. priests. And it's they're your church. No, no. It's your church that's every doing church it. Has sinners. They have the why, clergy. Why, why, why when you have the clergy you touching why? kids and you're not yes. leaving that church, something's wrong with you. you no church? wonder are you priests are you? men and don't allow women to talk. This is exhibit A of why your church don't allow women to talk, right there. They don't know much on the Bible. No wonder priests are the only ones doing the talking and not women. This is exhibit A right here of why your church is sending you to hellfire. Where is the Virgin Mary? Huh? You guys want to cry out to the Virgin Mary? You think Mary's going to listen to you? Where in our church does it say that we pray to Mary? Last time I checked, we intercede through Mary. Really? That's a big difference, isn't it? We can walk into any Catholic church. You're going to find candles, kneel pads. If you don't think oh, that's worship, what's, what's wrong with you? What's at the front? Jesus Christ. Am I correct? Do, do you we, pray Hail Mary? But we're not mom, praying. Right, we're, do we're, you pray we're, Hail Mary? to the words in the Hail Mary. You're, you are hailing Mary rather than God. No. No, no, we're not hailing. Anyone. Yes, you are. No, so then you're not saying Hail Mary? No, understand mother, the. Sir. Grab a number. Are you not saying no, Hail let's Mary? Not, well, let's not be rude at. Well, don't, don't interrupt. Rude, you need to tell him not to, to interrupt. You and I are just chit chatting. No, let's not be rude. Where? To kids. Let's start where? With that one. Well, are you thing, telling me hail, your church hail, is Mary. not saying are, well, they're not well, worshiping Mary? Hail as an adjective and not a noun. You're honoring her. No, we're not. Jesus said, oh, Jesus said, when you pray, say, Our Father. That's who your prayers should be directed to. Oh, not you, Mary, not St. Jude. Your church not only molests you boys, oh, they're God. sending you to hellfire. have been touched, sir. That's right. Well, that's good. Maybe you got a good family. Because most of those priests go after bad, broken homes. Most. And your church is known for this. Actually, bad, broken homes. Where you're, where you're uh, watching right now is uh, the church that I went to school and uh, the church that I came here for Sunday and uh, the church that uh, taught me even some about God. And so uh, what, what is significant about this church is uh, when I got saved, October 22nd, 1979, I started to read my Bible. On October 22nd, 1979, all alone in my room, I cried out to God, got born again, and had a desire to read the Bible. As I read the Bible, I had conflict as to what I was taught versus what the Word of God says. And so uh, with this conflict that I had, I had to have a meeting with the, the, the pastors and the ministers that taught me, and they were from this church. So at a very young age, I had a meeting with the priest of this church that I grew up in, that I went to school here, and um, uh, I had all these questions, and in this meeting, he told me, uh, Reuben, he's the educated one, not me. The more I read this book, the more I'd be confused, because he's the one with the education. So he told me not to read the Bible. My function was to be a good Catholic, 
and go to Mass. He ended the meeting. He got up, and before he left the office, he said, I'm going to see you at Mass on Sunday. Aren't I, Reuben? I said, oh yeah, oh yeah, you'll see me. And that, uh, that Sunday, I stood right on the sidewalk with my Bible, and I preached to the people that I knew. I actually began to preach to the people I went to school with, my neighbors. My mom was sitting in the last pew here, and uh, I knew them by name. And my first preach back then was to know the God of the Bible. And after 30 years of preaching in some very crude, rude, and dark streets, it was that time on that day when I preached in front of the people that I knew that killed my flesh more than anything else that I've ever preached at in 30 years. Times I've sat in jail for preaching, times where people came at me at the knives, a gun, I bled on the street, I was beaten. None of that killed my flesh more than this particular preach on that particular Sunday. It's usually religious people that I really try to go after because religion can send you to hell. There's a lot of people that went here that are in hell right now. And uh, I sat there with them. And they had every opportunity to get saved. And I want to try to extend that opportunity as loud and as clear as I possibly can. Where in the Bible do we actually find the word Pope? We find the word evangelist, prophet, apostle, but we don't find the word Pope. We don't find the word nun. We don't find the word Cardinal. Could it possibly be that your church has outgrown the Bible? We find the word Disciple. We find the word Prophet, Evangelist. There are titles in the Bible for men of God, but somewhere along the line, the word Pope is not found like the word purgatory, like uh, baptizing babies, that's not found in the Bible. Your church has lied to you. You don't believe in a Jesus Christ of the Bible. You believe in a different Jesus Christ. You believe in a Jesus and Mary are co-redeemers. Mary can't save you. You've been lied to by your church. Show me where in the Bible the word purgatory is used. You're a liar. You are a liar. Shame on you, wicked priest. Your church is molesting those children, and what do you guys do? You send more money to bail them out. Your church should put them in prison. Those priests should be put to death, molesting children. Shame on you. Jesus loves us. That's not an argument. The issue today is, do you love Jesus Christ? Jesus said, if you love him, you will obey him. Not bow down to an idol. Your church endorses praying to the Virgin Mary. Time for you to repent. Religion will send you to hell. Your religion will send you to hell. The religion of Muslims, of Allah, they have an enormous amount of bloodshed for their religion. And your religion, the Catholic Church, is right there with them. Your religion has a history of bloodshed. You belong to a bloody, murdering, child molesting, lying religion. Jesus Christ said, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And today, God is trying to give you an opportunity to be free from your church. Oh, the blind is leading the blind. Pit straight ahead. Plop, plop, plop. Falling into the pit. Nowhere in the Bible do we find anyone praying to Saint uh, Noah. We don't find anyone praying to Abraham. 
We don't find anyone praying to those dead saints. But your church endorses prayer to dead people. That's nothing more than being a necromancer. I have yet to see one Bible. But then again, you go to church without carrying your Bible. That should speak volumes of what you believe. You believe tradition rather than the Word of God. Oh, if you guys, if you guys popped open a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and saw the image of Mary in that peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you Catholics will be bowing down in front of that peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Where in the Bible do we find ashes on your forehead? You guys got ashes on your forehead on Wednesday, and you have more faith in those ashes than you do the blood of Jesus Christ. And God's word clearly says, do not bow down to any graven image. You're worshiping Mary and God says that's wrong. Well, my family when I was young uh, assumed I was just kind of crazy. My parents uh, thought, uh, well, you know, we trained them right. Let's just sit back and wait this one out. Let's just see if it's going to be a fad or, uh, you know, what's, what's going on. And so eventually they did, uh, they did support what I did. They understood I was buying into this. I wasn't changing. And so uh, as my personal family, uh, this was part of living. That's like, um, you know, asking somebody, uh, what did your family think of breathing? It's just normal. I, we don't have to talk about, I need to inhale and exhale. You just do it automatically. And so uh, if you live with me, it's part of living. It's part of life. I can come home from work and tell my wife, I can't eat. I got a phone call. I need to fly over to Philadelphia and catch a red eye tonight. No food. It's normal. She, she's taken me so many times to LAX, it's, uh, she can drive there in her sleep. And so uh, it becomes normal to do this. And, uh, and again, just like serving God isn't, isn't a burden, it's light. His burden is light. And so uh, I don't know any other way but to do it this way. And uh, uh, it is a glorious thing to serve God. My only regret is when I die, I only get a chance to serve God once on this side of heaven. And I pray to God that uh, I serve Him for my fullest, that I give Him all the glory. The Bible says that we're to, uh, to have treasure in heaven. I want more treasure. The more crowns I get, the more crowns I get to throw at the foot of Jesus. And that's what I want. Some of you might just are content with throwing uh, uh, just a crown at the foot of Jesus. I want tons of crowns to throw at the feet of my Lord. Uh, God didn't tell Noah, just build me a boat. Uh, he gave in exact instructions, how high, how long, even what type of wood. Uh, God didn't say, uh, uh, just build me a temple. We got chapters of actual instruction on how to build that temple. God doesn't say, just go out and preach. We got actual examples of men of God going into an area, lifting their voice, and preaching. Examples. The more I read the Bible, the more I was inspired to do it the way God wants it done. We need to contend for the faith. I challenge any Catholic priest to come out and contend for the faith. The Bible says, if anyone should stumble one of these, one of my little ones, which is what you're it, doing, hold stumbling on. them. It is better for a millstone to be placed around that person's neck Good. and cast start, into the start tying, sea. Start tying some millstones around your priests. But I'm just, and I understand that. Start tying some millstones around your priests. These are children. I understand as a Christian who goes to Calvary Chapel, Golden Springs with Raw Reese. So listen, what do you have in common listen, with this? I under what do you have in common with I this? I am trying to spread personal relationship with Jesus Christ. How is this showing God's love? 
You're not being very Two loving. Children. You're not being very loving. How am I not, sir? Well, you're you're doing exactly what you're accusing him of. You're so wacko. Accountable. Where in the Bible does it say hate purgatory? Can you show me? Children, right now. No. You will be held accountable. Why? God bless you, sirs. I pray for your souls. Don't let the door hit you on the way out. No. Are we saving your hate? Is not enough. Oh, hate. Hate. Well, well, your priests molest kids. We're hateful. Believing in the love of Christ. Yeah, right. Is enough. I bet those priests just love those kids, don't they? Oh, As they hey, touch you them. Know As they touch How them. Uh, uh, do, do you know the second commandment? I know. I know every single one. Of okay. Tell me number two. Thou shalt not use God's name in vain. No, that's number three. Give me number two. Well, thou. What is it? Exodus, Exodus chapter 20 is the Ten Commandments. I'll let you read it. Well, you go, can, go ahead. I don't want to play a guessing game. You think you but, know but it. But you know it. You say you know it. Well, I, I How long have you been a Catholic? My entire life. So your entire life and you can't tell me the Second Commandment? Well, we can go, we can go through. Uh, let me go, go ahead. Exodus I'm not going to touch your Bible. You, are you nervous? It won't bite you. Exodus chapter 20 gives you the Ten Commandments in order. What I I was only here to ask you one question. And I'm trying to ask you a question, and you haven't. For somebody no, who's no, no. a Catholic your whole life, you don't even know the second commandment? Well, tell me what it is. Uh, do not bow down to graven images. Graven That's command, images. Yeah, man-made. Like the statue of Mary is considered a graven image. That's the second commandment. Amen. Mister, I've been a Catholic all my life and don't even know the second commandment. Well, I'll tell you what, if this was, if this was 1920, I'd take you out there and I would I would I'd drag your, cra your ass all the way across town. Do it now! Do it now! Come on, do it now! And guess what, I'd get away with it. Do it now! So then you're spineless and you're gutless. Yes, I've uh, had violence over the years and it's, it's part of the course. And uh, I don't whine and complain. You rarely will hear me say, did you see that guy punch me? I expect it. Now, let me tell you, if you're a police officer, you're going to get shot. If you're a fireman, you might fall off a ladder or get burnt. Uh, if you're an Indy car driver, good chance you're going to get in an accident. If you're a street preacher, you're going to get beat. And so uh, I've been beaten more times. I can't recall how many times I, my face has been punched. How many, how many gallons of spit and urine uh, that have happened on my body. And so uh, uh, it's part of the job. They don't hate me. They hate who I represent. As a matter of fact, if they knew me, they would want me to be my neighbor. They would want me to, to, uh, to pick up their mail when they're on vacation. But they hate everything that I represent and that I can live with. I don't mind getting punched. And again, we're obligated to take the punch. And so uh, uh, I do take the punch. Uh, there is a preaching situation where we're obligated to take the punch. Uh, there is a non-preaching situation. For example, if somebody breaks into my home, I'm going to defend my house. And so that's a little bit different. But when I'm out on the street, I expect to be persecuted, hated, beaten, and sent to jail. And little do the heathen know, it only strengthens my faith even more because I tasted of this book. It's not just pages. Jesus says not to... <laughs> not to what? If you're going to discriminate towards our religion, like, we're the same people. Jesus said all that? We're the same people. Well, you're a people with two eyes and an ear, but uh, you're not, you don't have the same God as I do. Okay? No. No. Because if, if you had a chip that looked like the Virgin Mary, you guys will be bowing down to that chip because it looks like the Virgin Mary. You guys are so caught up in the Virgin Mary, you reject what God says. God says he's against those idols. Oh, your church used to kill people like me. Your church used to kill people like me. Your church is filled with bloodshed. You want to know the history of your church? Evil, wicked. Your pope is burning in hell. Mother oh, Teresa wow. burning in hell. Wow. And wow. rightly so. Wow. And wow. rightly wow. so. Wow. Yeah. Hey, right when now. you start Those worshiping idols, holy, you holy deserve hellfire. That's what love. God says. That's God's standard, God not mine. You act like
like you've never seen a Christian before, Kevin. Huh? Uh, if my preaching is hateful, it's only because you hate God. And so uh, it's going to be classified as hateful. Uh, no, no question about it. Only because people in the theater that I live in hate a holy God. And so the Bible says that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. I'm sure he was considered hateful, unloving, uh, not accepting of everyone, and rightly so, because he represented God who's not going to uh, accept everyone. But uh, we live in a society where words like being tolerant, uh, you're hateful, uh, these are words that people use all the time. Christians shouldn't use that. Uh, Stephen would have been accused of being hateful when he preached in the book of Acts, you stiff neck and uncircumcised in heart and ears, you do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers do. He would have been considered hateful. Paul would have been considered hateful when he told Bar Jesus, I'm gonna blind you in Jesus' name. That would have been considered hateful. So uh, there's a lot of things that were hateful. When Jesus called people uh, dogs, uh, a wicked generation, he even told his disciples, if you then being evil, so there's a lot of men of God in the Bible who said some things that they would have been considered hateful. If Jesus Christ would have said, let the blind lead the blind, oh, the Braille Institute would have demanded an apology right now, Jesus. Jesus Christ would have been considered hateful. So if I'm considered hateful, I feel I'm among some men of valor and I'm gonna stand with these men. And, and it's not gonna affect me. Again, the bottom line is, you hate God. Because if you loved God's standards, you would appreciate our message and our in-your-face uh, approach. And do you find a lot of people like changing and turning their ways? It or you, doesn't are you matter. Not, you're not looking for that. It doesn't matter. So you're not trying to share the good news of Jesus? Uh, no, that's wrong. Okay. Uh, the point is, the Bible says uh, some plant uh, the seed, yeah. some water the seed, yeah. and another will reap the harvest. Okay. okay, the guy that reaps the harvest, he might be saying to the guy that's planting the seeds, where's all your fruit? See all my fruit? Bad attitude. Yeah. Okay, the concept is one person waters, another person plants, another person reaps that harvest. Ha hang on a second, don't, inter don't interrupt. Had you been a mature Christian, you would at least say, amen for your signs. Maybe somebody else will reap the, the harvest of this. You cannot have anti-gay stuff on university campus. That's not true. It's true. You cannot have... Don't be a homosexual, see? That's not true. Homosexual deserve AIDS and judgment. See? ...of Muslims killing you in the airport. I know. I was just but, but look at him. He's a nice man. He's a solidly built man. Muslims will send you to hell. Girls, if this guy's a Muslim, which he's which he's not saying so, are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Are you a Muslim? Are you are you kind of embarrassed? You're kind of embarrassed at this moment. You want to see how how peaceful this guy's religion is? No, I have a question. Go to the nearest airport. Go to LAX. All that security, okay. his religion. It's not because of Buddhists. It's not because of uh, uh, Methodists. It's not even because of Hare Krishnas. Your religion. Bad. Bloody. And Mohammed is a pedophile. Mohammed is a pedophile. If this was against anti-gays, people would call security. Go get security. Go get security. Go get security. I have a question. You were just telling her that she should learn to dress uh, more. I know somebody over there said. Well, no, you, I said you, that was a good okay, but good suggestion. Him. God bless him your, for encouraging your that. Main Absolutely. The argument against no, no, I'm Islam not, I'm for us women here are that we should just we would have to dress more conservatively and would be attacked for how we dress in those countries. So what makes you any different from what they're saying? Uh, I won't chop your your head off. Okay. They will uh, kill you. Not, in no, fact, no, no, in fact, your your education, the way, they would kill you. Your education, they would kill you. So this guy's a pedophile? This guy's a rapist? <laughs> this, guy's a rapist. <laughs> this guy said that he should be raped. There, there's guy, a, their so prophet night, Muhammad so one night, married a seven-year-old girl. Let's see who can shout louder. What, what person <laughs> nice is voice. going to actually a marry a seven-year-old girl? Yeah, this, I can't believe this. that. This, when tonight somebody He's gets raped, pedophile. it's this guy, right? Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. 
sir, what's the difference between Christians killing people as opposed to uh, Muslims killing people? When do Christians kill people? In All Afghanistan. The time. Right Such All as what? In the war in Iraq. Crusade. Probably in because we want to keep the war over there and not in this country. So and as a matter of fact, okay. those soldiers aren't so doing it for the gospel. Those soldiers are doing it for political and other reasons. We don't kill for Jesus Christ. They kill for Allah. They smash, they smash planes for Allah. They smash planes for their God. That's a Catholic, you idiot. Don't you know the difference between Catholic and Christian? What a big dummy you are. You don't know much, do you? What a, we're not actually in Afghanistan for Jesus Christ. You're always going to have wars. You want to see what's happening over there? This religion. This religion is wicked and vile. Are you a Muslim? Who cares? See, they're embarrassed you're to be a Muslim. Muslim. No, and they should be embarrassed. I'm glad they're embarrassed. I'm glad they're embarrassed. I'm glad they're embarrassed. Why don't you have one I'd be embarrassed too if my prophet was a pedophile you like theirs. I would be absolutely embarrassed if my prophet was a pedophile. Why are you holding? Did you know Mohammed married a seven-year-old girl? Had sex with a nine-year-old girl? It's in their history. Why are you scared? What 50-year-old man look me in the is going to look, look me in the at a, at a nine-year-old eye. girl and say, me in the I'm going to look have sex eye. with you. You're, scared. you're, you're scared. a liar you're scared. and you're going to burn you're, you're in hell. Kid. You're, you're a prophet. To, you're you're trying you're trying a prophet is... No, you're not looking at me. I'm looking at you dead your in your prophet face. prophet is sick nothing person. more you're than sick. a pedophile. You and you deserve hell. You're a rapist. You ought to thank God you're in this America. And you're living in America. No, you don't live in America. You ought to thank God you live in this country. Look at you. Stop beating people. So have a, you don't you have a, a clue about free speech. You became a pig. Yeah. Keep your pedophile. Off. Take off your a glasses. A pedophile. Rapist. That's what his prophet is. You're an example of an extremist group of You are an extremist group of Christians. I'm not going to slit your throat, woman. I'm not going to slit your throat. Unlike them, I won't slit your throat. Why don't you go walk around Afghanistan dressed like that? Masturbating in hell right now? Because these people are why don't you go walk around? You'll come back and actually thank this country. You should convert to Christianity. You should convert to Islam. You should convert to Judaism. He's right. You should, but not his form. This is disgusting. Okay, all religion is beautiful. No, they're not. No, they're not. As his religion is killing people right now. Right now, his religion is killing people. The guy's a he's a used car salesman. He's nothing more than a used car salesman. His religion will will put you in a grave. It's true. It's true. It's true. I'm trying to make people love. It's true. Mohammed was a pedophile. If Mohammed was alive today, he would be probably a Catholic priest today. He'd make a Catholic priest happy. I'm sorry, what denomination did you say that you were a part of? Bible believer. Two words. So Bible, Bible fucked up interpreter? Believer. <laughs> Bible believer. No wonder my brother said that, uh, what, were you a whore? Is that what he called you? Is that what he said? Yeah, well, and, he, and with your mouth, no wonder. He was right on the money. He was, the more you keep talking, the more you keep talking, the more you just confer him. If she was a woman, she shouldn't have a, a mouth like that. Then again, then again, she's not a lady. Then again, she's not a lady. Oh, go ahead. I just, uh, I, I, you know, let's just get into this. It won't take too long. But doesn't he have a point that isn't it kind of turning others away by being You can person? walk away. No, I understand. Nobody's, nobody's, you know, commanding you to stay here. I understand. I didn't duct tape you and kidnap you. You can leave at any given time. Do you believe a Catholic who dies, a Catholic goes to heaven? Uh, check this out, right? You're asking me these questions, but you're not really listening to what I'm saying. It's just a simple yes or no. Okay. If you can't answer it, just... Clack your foot once for yes and twice for no. If you don't have the courage and the backbone to answer a simple question, do Muslims who die a Muslim go to heaven? I answered that question for you already. I yes said, or no? I said if they, if they do not announce Jesus as Lord and Savior, then no. I Where do they go? 
Are you going to hell? Just like you said, right? Okay. But I'm saying, I agree with you on that point. Yeah. So, so we have Muslims on this campus. Yeah. Uh, have you actually mentioned that to some of these Muslims? Um, no, because that's not where I feel like God. Well, that's why I'm here. Can you okay. please? That's why I'm here. I'm here doing your job. If you would be doing your job, young man, I may not have to be here. Okay. But I'm here because you're not doing your job. Okay. So when I see you, if I see you tomorrow, memorize Matthew 23. Jesus talking to religious people. And for extra credit, Jeremiah chapter 23. Okay. You can't miss it. You'll love him. I have a question. I'll be back with you. All right. Have a nice day. I have a question for you. Why are you here? Well, we're here. Why are you here? I'm going to answer. You want to ask me one more time or can I say something? We're here as Christians to tell you that only Jesus Christ will save you. Save you from yourself and your sin. Not religion. Not Hang on. Not religion. Not what you think or feel. And it, the only way to Jesus Christ is repenting of your sin and getting born again. That's very clear. Can I tell you something? Yeah. I do not believe in God or Jesus or anything. It's fine. fine. If there was a tiny, tiny shed that I would ever be Christian like you, yeah, you have completely destroyed. It. Hey, great! I did you my are, job. You are sitting Fantastic. here. Fantastic. You bashing, made my day. You're sitting here bashing I, all religion. Oh, you Why? made my day. Are there any more like you? Oh, I'm you sure made my day. Absolutely. Thanks for thanks for saying that. So uh, you've been you've been waiting in line. I hope you I hope you're gonna make my day like he did. See, I, I made a decision. Decisions are happening, and I'm glad. I'm glad. You're a big boy. I'm not going to weep for you. I'm not going to beg and cry and plead. You're a big boy. I can't wait. You want to go to hell? That's where all the fun people That's it. What uh, what religion are you? I'm Hindu. You're Hindu. Yeah, okay. but I'm not forcing my Hinduism onto you, am I? Uh, no, you're not. Yeah, but and you and you shouldn't. Right. So because why? evidence of your religion That's is uh, children dying of starvation. Well, I mean, oh, in oh, India, yeah, sorry, India, sorry, sorry. those hey, kids hey, are hey, dying hey, of starvation. Hey, hey, they would rather. Genius, shut the they fuck would up. rather eat. Shut the fuck and and what's <laughs> the? I don't you got your in your country in India they'll feed a cow and they'll feed a cow. Boston, Massachusetts. Your religion, your religion will actually feed a cow and turn around and let a child starve to death. That's how wicked your religion is. Let's just get a fact to fact. You are going to keep walking, so have a nice day. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Reincarnation. Ha! If you a Christian? Ha! Right. Are you Muslim? I mean, I was born and raised in Pakistan, so I was exposed to... I didn't ask you where you were born. I, was I didn't ask to see your driver's license. Are you a Muslim? No, no, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. I'm a Muslim, but I'm as much a Jew as I am a Muslim. So you're not really a Muslim? I mean, I am a Muslim, but I'm as much a Jew and a oh, Christian you as you got I'm an infidel standing in front of you. You know what to do. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, see, that's... <laughs> Maybe you don't like to hit somebody with glasses. you got an infidel. Directly, look at my face. I'm looking at you. You got an infidel directly in front of you. You know what to do. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, what you don't understand is that I can actually believe that Jesus was the Son of God, even though Islam, according to you, teaches elsewhere. No, Islam doesn't. Not according to me, it doesn't. No, no, no. It's a Islam, yeah, exactly. So all Muslims believe that you know, God, God has no family, right? It's like a spiritual thing. He doesn't have like a human, you know, connection. The Bible right? says, if you don't honor the Son like you honor the Father, you don't know God. Oh my God, yeah. he's a rap So you he's have to acknowledge like, Jesus as the Son of God. Yeah. Right. So I'm you have, telling you that I've acknowledged that. You right? have a, I've acknowledged your right to acknowledge that. Well, then you need therefore acknowledge that. Uh, you're getting close. Keep coming to the light. But <laughs> Keep coming to the light. Here, you're getting close. You're coming close. How about, how about just, how about just a refuting that Muhammad was a liar and Jesus Christ is your Messiah. He's your Savior. No, I believe that. Look, I'm like a study, I'm a, I study art, right? What, what do I study? I study basically religion, right? But by way of Jesus Christ. Uh, we, we belong to a group called Bible Believers, and there were three or four of us who at a very young age, uh, we called ourselves Bible Believers. We wanted to, uh, to uh, have a, an organization or a fellowship in which we could uh, uh, fellowship with other street preachers. This is a city that never sleeps.
traffic, people walking around, subways going 24 hours a day. This is a city that never sleeps. Everybody's always upset. Everybody's always got a frown in their face because they don't sleep. They ought to pick on these little men get a little happiness in them. So we come here to bring Jesus Christ some real joy. This place, too much sin. This is definitely not the half of a God's eye. This big apple is a rotten apple. Bad fruit needs to be hewn down and cast into the fire. Yeah. How'd you like somebody to be lusting after your daughter? How'd you like somebody to be lusting after your mother? Huh? You got nothing else? I've got a lot of things in there. What'd you get the fuck out of here? What's your language? Hey, don't get so emotional. Real hands. You are sick, aren't you? Would your mother be proud of you? I bet she would. Hallelujah. Would your mother appreciate what you're doing? You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hallelujah. Go Repent. Right. What's next, children? After you make it, you want videos, children? You wonder why we got problems in the world today with great and everything else? It's because of guys like you. We got our great problems with rape and child incest, and you think you want to make a business out of it. Shame on you. That's right. Come on out. Come on out. Come on out. That's shame right. on you. I don't blame you. I'd be embarrassed if I got caught in a store like that, too. We got problems with incest. We got problems with rape. And you want to make money out oh, yeah. this type of thing. Hey, that is shame to yourself. Hey, you're the guy we caught in there. Don't preach to us. You're the guy we caught in there. Don't preach to us. Come on out here. So let's go. Line them up. Line them up. Let's get on out. There is no other name under heaven whereby man must be saved. And that's the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ did not come so when you get mad, you can take his name in vain. Oh, Christ! Turn from sin. Turn to Christ. If you're a homosexual, stop being a homosexual. If you're a drunkard, stop being a drunkard. If you're a drug addict, stop being a drug addict. If you're an adulterer, stop being an adulterer. Turn from sin. What? Turn to Christ. What? And so uh, oftentimes, open-air preachers uh, believe they're prophets of God or believe that they're used of God and, and don't believe that the church is really of God. In fact, sometimes most open-air preachers may believe that the church is a bunch of Pharisees and they're devils and demons. And so they take no advice or counsel from anyone. So when we formed Bible believers, it's to watch out for each other, to counsel each other to give advice to each other, to uh, look out for each other, because they may not take counsel from, uh, from churches. 
And so over the years, we've now grown. To date, we have about 78 chapters of Bible believers just in the United States. Worldwide, we even have more of men who were inspired by what we've done to boldly take the Word of God out in the streets with signs, t-shirts, megaphones, and in-your-face type of a preaching. And so uh, uh, we uh, are not involved in being married to the state because uh, they would probably remove that from us because we do get involved in politics. I speak against my president. I love my country, but I'm going to speak against my president. And so we mix politics, we mix religion, we mix current events. We got an issue and, and a message for everyone. And uh, so we are an organization in the sense that we have fellowship. Uh, it's not uh, something that uh, you need to be like-minded. We have many people in our group. We have wild-eyed Pentecostals and legalist Baptists who, when they get together, have one message, and that's repent and believe in Jesus Christ. You can read Fox's Book of Martyrs, and before these people die, they're not arguing theology. Realistically, at the end of a man's life, the only name that really we gotta concern ourselves with is Jesus Christ. So, you're out here expressing your, um, obviously you guys are out here, your First Amendment, right? And we respect that, that's what makes this country great. Um, the only issue that we're having right now is the signage. There are strict regulations to signage on college campuses, and it is called the CCNRs. They're not allowed to be this tall, and they must be made out of wood. The size of the sign has to be between what? Less than 30 by 30. So 30 by 30, and you're going about 40 by 30. And what has happened, unfortunately, people have ruined it for everyone else who's used them as weapons before. That's the whole reason behind it. Today we're just advising you of it. We are just giving you. Okay. So today is just just notification. The university has decided to tell the police department us that they don't need to leave with them, but they're not welcome back with the same size signage next time. Hey, if I could uh, have a, the code on that, yes. So we can have one of our attorneys just look it up and just yes. verify that. Does someone have a piece of paper? We're probably going to stick around for about another hour, uh, and and could we leave these up and then next time we come? Consider just being advised today. The, the only reason I don't want to walk away right now is I don't want these students to say. This is how we get rid of guys like this. Call the police, and now they're walking away. They didn't hear the conversation, and they're just assuming. They don't no, I understand. Saying, I understand. We're not saying that at all. You have the right to express right. your, no, I understand. And your, and your and your rights and your beliefs. But uh, I'll go ahead and have one of our attorneys take a look at that, and uh, and we'll get it noised about. Next time you come, make sure your signs are in compliance. Yeah, okay. gotcha. Now, is that a... Um, is that... If you bring it back, it is a rest. No, I mean, is, that a, uh, is that a campus code, or is no, that a... State. State regulations, State code. No, California Code of Regulations. Gotcha. Yeah. So look up CCNR California Code of Regulations. You've been advised if it does occur again, you can be subject to arrest. So I'm just letting my dispatcher know that I've spoken to you, that you've been advised, that you and the other brothers are aware of the situation. Seven six three for code ten on on another one. <laughs> And, and sometimes it may it may look like it gets a little escalated, but you know the kids they they police themselves. If it gets a little heated, they kind of slow down. And he's not with you, is he? No, 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 no he's not with us. No. But we'll probably stick around for about another forty-five minutes, guys, and then okay. and then the we're done. The gentleman dressed uh, it, is he with you? Yes, he is. Okay, what's his name? Uh, his name is Jed. Uh, his name, brother Jack. Yes, that brother you? Jed. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thanks a lot. Sorry to, sorry to torture you, bring you out here. The reason why I take a confrontational approach is because it's biblical, for starters. I mean, I don't see any of the prophets or any of the apostles uh, having a lemonade stand for Jesus. I don't see any of the prophets uh, uh, mowing the lawn of the sinner uh, for Jesus. I do see these men in the book of Acts making no small stir when they preached, causing issues. Why would they arrest you if you didn't cause a stir? These men of God uh, wrote most of the New Testament from a jail cell. So we're going to be hated. Things are going to be happening. There should be a clash. Anytime light and darkness collide, there's going to be a clash somewhere. I've had heathen, after the end of a day, come at me and say, Wow, i never seen anything like this. And they should, but that's what happens when light collides with darkness. 
and, and we are supposed to be beacons. I want to be a beacon, a bright light in that darkness. Some of you Christians, you, you're kind of like a, a flickering Bic lighter. You're just, you know, you know, it's just off and on and you're not really that concerned. Be a beacon for the kingdom of God and, and you will cause a conflict. You gotta have tools. We're, we're called uh, confrontational. No, we're not. In fact, realistically, it's the heathen who are having issues with our holy God. That's really the problem. It's not us. We're not confrontational. They are. In fact, another thing that we get blamed on is we're condemning people. I can't condemn anybody, but what I will do, I will confirm your condemnation. It is you that will be condemned before God. Nothing that I can do. All we're doing is promoting a standard of God and you will condemn yourself. You can say we're confrontational, we're not. As a matter of fact, it's you who is confrontational with God. We're just trying to clean that up. Street preaching is very common. A campus preaching is very common. When you think of street preaching, you know, you think of guys in the corner uh, raising their Bible and preaching. When you think of campus preaching, you may think of uh, a Jed Smock or, or Campus Crusade, uh, you know, some type of a ministry like that. In my life, I would like to bring event preaching to the table. I would like to expose the concept of event preaching. And so in America, we have numerous events. If you live in a big city, you can have a concert, you can have a baseball game, you can have a homosexual parade, you can have a book signing, and all of those should be covered. And we go to each of those events with a banner that fits and our message that's gonna be tailored for those people. Before I die, I like to bring event preaching as common as street preaching, campus preaching, pulpit preaching and so we want to take that message to those people and uh, and preach to them whatever the event is in other words if it's a homosexual parade you'll see banners you don't bring a hockey puck to a baseball game so you tailor your message and when you preach events you're not gonna stand there have you ever lied what does that make you you deal with the event that's the whole concept whatever the event is uh, I have preached them and uh, will make Jesus Christ the issue. And it doesn't matter what the event is, you can always make Jesus Christ the issue. People like to stand in line for a funeral this morning. Somebody died? God bless you. Did somebody die today? Why don't you read your Bible and start learning about the one that died for you? Time to get a new church there, guys. Your church has lied to you. Good morning to you too. Your church has lied. You can make it a good morning by being born again like Jesus Christ said. You can be a good person first. Uh, no, good people go to hell. Atheists are very good people, but they go to hell. But your Pope actually wants to embrace atheists. Uh, the Bible says an atheist is a fool. Oh, uh, Not all right, that's what the Word of God says. Jesus on the cross said... It is finished. His blood shed was enough. No need for having faith in your scapular. No need for having ashes on your forehead. No need for trying to obey your sacraments. It is finished means precisely that. No more needed. Your works are as filthy rags before God. Any of you women walking around on your period today, that's what your works look like to God. That product right between your legs, that bloody pad right between your legs is what your works look like to a holy God. Jesus said, it is finished. Mary cannot redeem you from anything. Mary cannot even hear your prayer. How come Joseph never gets any, any prayers? Don't you guys care about stepfathers? How come Joseph never gets any praise? You guys honor Mother Mary more than you do God. 
Shame on you. Read the Bible, people. How many of you have actually brought your Bible today? Huh? This is a religious meeting. How many of you have actually brought your Bible today? You have outgrown God's word. Shame on your church. Your church will send you to hell. Your church is nothing more than an Elks Lodge with a cross. Shame on you. You reject a holy God. You reject what God has offered for you. Salvation only in Jesus Christ. Neither is there salvation in any other, no other name but Jesus Christ. Not your Pope, not Mary, not your works, nothing but Jesus Christ. Shame on you. Roman Catholic is a trailer trash of all religion. Trailer trash of all religion. What do you mean being a bully, you little crybaby? Your church killed people like us. Your church killed people. Two guys show up with a sign and you say bully, you little half a homo, you little crybaby. You ought to look at the bloodshed of your church. It's almost like the Muslims. You've killed more people than you talk about. Two guys show up and you say, yeah, stop being a little bully, you little crybaby. Young man, when God was handing out testicles, you were not in line, were you? You were not in line when God was handing out testicles. Let a girl talk for you. Read the Bible. You need to serve God. You need to believe in Jesus Christ there, fella. You, you really think you're going to go to heaven? No. Huh? You're not going to heaven. So you admit you're not going to heaven. Well, repent and get born again so you can go to heaven. Jesus said, you need to be born again. You don't believe in the Jesus Christ of the Bible. You think that Mary is the co-redeemer. Mary's going to get you out of a purgatory. You pray your Hail Marys. You do your rosaries. You bow down to Mary. It's not Mary that will save you. It is only, solely, through the blood of Jesus Christ. The Bible makes it very clear. Neither is there salvation in any other. No other name but Jesus. You have a form of Jesus, but you reject the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Muslims believe in Jesus, but they neglect the fact that he's the son of God. Mormons believe in a Jesus, but Jesus and Lucifer aren't brothers. Jehovah's Witnesses have a form of Jesus as a created angel. You also have a form of Jesus, and you liar. You lied to people, you bad priest, wicked priest, evil priest. What a walking $3 bill. You're a phony fraud. Shame on you. You guys are a bunch of perverts. You think you're walking around humble? You're, you need to be broken before God. You're a liar. Shame on you. God's going to judge you, you lying devil. Oh, let's put these robes on and let men praise us. You liar. You liar. Shame on you. You know you're headed for hell. You give up God's word by mere tradition. Why don't you come and defend your faith? Why don't you come and defend your faith? Uh, we've had uh, one particular church uh, over the years uh, spend so much money on lawyers to try to make laws to keep us going and uh, it just caused them grief uh, that they decided to buy a section of the street to keep us off and that was the Mormon Church they bought Main Street just to tell us guys it is now private property you can't come on here anymore and so uh, if they can spend 50, 60 million dollars for a slab of sidewalk, I consider that a victory. That's one less temple that's going to be built someplace. And so uh, I rejoice on that. And again, uh, Dearborn, you better take note of that. Because once we took our hat off, you, you've, we're going to be around a while. We're not going any place. Ask Salt Lake City how we handle things. You want to learn about the free speech? Ask Salt Lake City.
That's starters. You starters. are an ignorant. Show me where the word you purgatory are, is found. Show me the word tractor appears there. Show me. I'm not having Show faith in where. that tractor. I'm. You got. You Catholics, Catholics are have, buying into purgatory. Faith. Don't have faith. Heaven in or hell. They don't have faith. Period. For your information, you. They don't this. have faith. Period. For your information. That's good. That's good. You have no faith. Morons. Thank you. You have faith, no faith. Faith is for morons. Faith is for morons. Data, facts. Logic, science. Fact is. Theory of evolution. Fact is. Purgatory, so you believe in evolution? Pur yes, I do. So yes, you don't I believe do. in believe in God? I do. This is a, this is an atheist convention, is what you're trying evolution to tell me. Evolution is not atheist. It's agnostic. You're a homosexual. So you're a homo. Talk about homos. You're in the right place. You're filled with priests that are homos, nuns that are lesbians. They rape little boys. No wonder somebody like you are in this uh, convention today. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Where'd the Big Bang come from there, genius? Ah, where, where'd the self come from? Where did that come from? Where'd the singularity come from? Where did it come from? It had to come from someplace. Matter had to come from someplace. Come back later when you can talk longer. No, I don't. What you know is religion. What you know is a commandment of a man. You don't know the word of God. You neglect God's word. You are drunken with your religion. Your religion can send you to hell fire. Stop judging me, judging you. Stop judging me, judging you. Time to know the God of the Bible. Oh, you don't know Jesus Christ. You hang around, you hang around priests that molest little boys and I'm crazy? Time for you to find another church. How many of you have been touched by these priests? How many of you claim to know God and have relatives that are banking on purgatory? You're praying them out of purgatory. There is no purgatory. There is only heaven or hell. God makes it very clear. Heaven or hell fire when you die. Not purgatory. Not reincarnation. You're a liar. You're a liar and you're sending people to hell. You're a phony fraud. Shame on you. I just wanted to congratulate you. Thank you. I was talking to a friend of mine about First Amendment rights and about the fact that people really don't take them seriously. Yes. And it's like guns are an issue, but not that. So I, it's very cool that hey, you Hey, somebody's got to do it. <laughs> and even if we didn't have First Amendment, I'd still do it. I don't well, do it because it's First Amendment. But it's, I like the fact that... It supports that, so, you know. And I appreciate our military who have given their lives for me to do such. But if Obama tomorrow eliminated open-air preaching, I'd go to jail because I'd still do it. I don't do it because it's my right. I do it because we're commanded by Jesus to do it. I understand that. So, uh, but I appreciate you appreciating me <laughs> practicing that First Amendment. And thank God we live in America. Seriously. I mean, because I couldn't do this at the Vatican. You probably couldn't get into the Vatican. Well, they wouldn't know. let me in the grounds. So, so much for First Amendment there. Well, but here, we're lucky. That's right. But the Bible says, to much is given, much is required. I so, we're going to be that. required a lot more than maybe Christians in North Korea or Afghanistan who might get killed for their faith. So much is given, much is required. So it's a blessing that we have this now, but when we stand at the judgment seat of Christ, we're going to be required of a lot more. We were required of much. I think we have to do a lot here, don't you? We I think have I'm, to help our fellow man in like a big way. And I'm trying to help my way. fellow a Catholic starting today. You're Catholic? No, no. <laughs> Your fellow Christian. Well, I'm trying to, I want, I want to be a Catholic, but they're turning me off. I can't believe in purgatory and the Pope. I'd love to be a Catholic, but I can't, I can't endorse this. I think the church has strayed away from the Bible. When you preach the way God wants you to preach, you will get criticized. And we should expect it. Jesus said, your name is going to be slandered. Thank you, Father, for this food. Uh, bless this time, this fellowship. 
uh, those eyes that uh, saw and those ears that heard. Yeah. And we pray, Father, for those hands that took in the literature. And we ask that uh, we get laborers to actually reap that harvest. And specifically, we pray for those who uh, do not thank you and, uh, and not uh, give you grace for this meal. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The day I am concerned what people say about me is the day I hang my megaphone up. Read the Bible, everybody. Don't forget about Jesus Christ. Don't forget to pray before you take a bite of your food. Be thankful to God. Just the basics. You don't want to take advantage of God's mercy. After 30 years of preaching on the street, the only thing people have against what I do is my method. That's not too shabby. But people are going to criticize you no matter what. They criticize Jesus. They criticize John the Baptist. They criticize men of God in the Bible. Most of the prophets were criticized. Can you imagine what, what the prophet community said when Isaiah walked around nude and barefoot preaching? Can you imagine what the prophet community said when Ezekiel laid on one side and another side? Can you imagine what the prophet community said when Hosea married a whore? Come on, brother. Now you're really straight. You're making us look bad. He didn't tell you to do that. When God tells you to do things, your reputation is over. I'm not here because of me. I don't go to a city to uh, kiss babies, pass out cigars, and, and, and try to be elected to be their mayor. I'm there to represent God and to give a message for God. And that's going to not only step toes, that's going to crush feet. And people are going to despise me. And so uh, when I waxed strong as a Christian growing up, uh, I understood this and I, and I counted the cost. So uh, my name is smeared. People are going to gossip and slander. I would not spend the time to defend myself. It would take uh, uh, several people 40 hours a week, uh, you know, just to try to defend all of the slander. For those who know me, know the slander is wrong. And besides, it doesn't matter what others think. It matters what God thinks. If I offend everyone I come in contact with and not offend God, that's where my uh, heart is. That's what I will do. And so I'm not here to, uh, to make friends on this planet. I'm here to please God. And in the process of pleasing God, if I offend you, hey, so be it. I'm not going to lose one meal. I won't miss any sleep. It doesn't bother me. To criticize me is like trying to spit a, 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 a spitball at a Sherman tank. It's not going to affect that. You think you're going to bother me? It doesn't do anything to me. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Bible says, uh, if you're not with him, you're against him. And I don't look at other Christians that they should be like me. I'm content with God using you in the caliber in which he's supposed to use you. And so uh, if I offend people, it doesn't matter. My main goal in all my body parts are having one main issue, and that's not to offend God, to speak what God wants. That, that's, that's not a church. You do understand that's not a church. But which is where? Are you a part of the Catholic Church? That's a bad church. They lied to you. Time to get a new church. Well, I hope you're a citizen of this country. Oh, but now you speak English. All of a sudden you're healed and now you speak English. Time for you to find a real Bible-believing church. Do you read the Bible there, red shirt? Huh? Do you read the Bible? Do you know where the word purgatory is found in the Bible? No. Where is it? It's not in there. You got a hammer? This is your idol, Mary. This is what God thinks of Mary. Idolatry. Mary can't see you. Mary can't move. Why would you Catholics worship an idol? You worship an idol that has eyes but can't see, hands but can't touch, feet that can't run, 
This is your God. Your God is made with graven hands. Mary is nothing more than a statue. You get involved with a statue. You consider this a statue. Have you lost your mind? You anger God with idolatry. This is idolatry. God considers such to be idolatry. The Bible makes it very clear not to bow down to graven images. Hey, didn't, uh, didn't Moses have uh, that staff with the snake and tell the people to bow down before it if they were to be healed? And they all came in front of the statue and they bowed before the, the serpent snake to be healed. God said that's the only way they're going to be healed. You don't and pray. Exactly you don't pray to a snake. You don't pray to oh, this. Oh, I'm saying that. I didn't Are you saying pray. Mary looks like this? Does Mary look like this? Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on. Does Mary look like what is, this? What is Jesus? Mary doesn't look okay, like this. What is Jesus? Why are you going to worship something that you don't even know what she looks like? Hail hey, oh Mary is what you say. Which means rejoice. It's in the book. It's in the gospel. Jesus said when you pray, you say our Father. You don't pray to Mary. You say our Father. That's what God says. Revelation. That's not a new revelation. When you pray, you say, Our Father, idol, nothing more than an idol, has no eyes, can't see you, can't walk, can't smell, can't hear you. It's a man made God. Why do you have? candles around these statues why do you have candles around these statues this is pure idolatry pure idolatry yes it is it is not maybe it is you you do this you bow down to this go ahead uh, Jesus' mother is Mary, but this is not Mary. This is not Mary. I don't bow and down and pray to my mother. My mother doesn't save me from my sin. My mother raised me properly, but I don't pray and bow down to my mother. What about Joseph? I don't bow down to my pictures. I don't bow down and pray to pictures of my mother. Every church that's Catholic has kneeling pads around these idols. You think Mary is saying, yes, yes, worship me? Your idolatry. Mary's not going to save my soul. Yes, you are. You're defending Mary like she's some co-redeemer. No. Of course they're going to say so. They're Catholic. That's your idolatry. That's your Mary. Nobody's worshiping statues. We can go into any Catholic church in this city and you're going to find that. Uh, the cow suit uh, gets a little bit of publicity. And again, I don't do the cow suit at a homosexual parade. Uh, I do the cow suit to Hare Krishnas or Hindus, only because uh, um, they used to be very violent people. Believe it or not, they call themselves pacifists, but uh, they've, uh, they've hit us so many times uh, you wouldn't believe. And so uh, I got tired of getting punched, believe it or not. Uh, you know, it hurts having a bruise and a, and a, and a puffed up face, you know, that, that hurts. I'd like to break, uh, you know, uh, and break that up if I could. Go through every precaution. It's not holy cow as these Krishnas believe. It's holy Bible. Read the Bible. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. God died for you on the cross. Details in the Bible. And so that was a purpose of me dressing up as a cow. It's part of their God. And I thought, I'll give it a shot. I'll try it. And praise the Lord, they stopped punching. And they actually listened to what I said. 
But this is uh, this is by idolatry by the actual letter, by the letter of the law. They have images that they are worshiping, and so we're here to preach to them that this is not a god. This is not holy. <laughs> And so I turn that into a preach. And uh, there's many things that I've done over the years, such as a, a pig head, such as waving Mormon underwear, such as busting up statues, such as taking somebody's holy book and dragging it on the ground as I'm preaching. Only because I've been influenced like men uh, in the Bible, like uh, Ezekiel, who did many things. As a matter of fact, he was like a street performer. He did so many things. His wife died, and God says, don't mourn. People were saying, what's going on? He did so many things that were visuals, it was incredible. And so I do a lot of visual aids uh, in the sense that, he, just like Ezekiel did. So he's, he's my hero as far as that. And it's for a reason. It's for a reason. Those things are for a reason. You can mock what I say, slander what we do, but understand, men of God in the Bible did some pretty incredible things. Walk around naked. That's, that's unique. You know, we polish their tomb and, and quote from the book of Isaiah. However, those same guys that want to slander me would have slandered Isaiah had they lived with him during that time. So uh, I do dress up. I do use skits. Uh, I do have a little satire when I preach. And it's for one reason. We live in a generation where people get bored. If your message isn't bright and crisp and going, they're gonna, you're going to lose your crowd. We live in a generation where somebody can have 900 channels on TV and actually say, well, there's nothing on TV tonight. This is my audience. So if I just stood there, in the Bible says, nobody's going to listen. But you actually preach like you believe this stuff, you're going to get their attention. We live in a theater where you can only have a mind span of maybe a minute and a half and they'll walk away. If you grab somebody who's going to listen to you for hours, wow, that's something unique. And so uh, uh, what we do, everything has a purpose and it is to glorify God. And that is the whole purpose of why I do what I do when I do it. When you pray, you're supposed to pray to God and God only. God and God only. Jesus said, when you pray, you say, Our Father. Can I ask you to pray for me? That's in the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But before I pray, I want this so we can get rid of it. Get what? Your badge, so you don't go inside. My badge? Yeah. Why? Because if you want me to pray for you, it's going to cost you. Let's get rid of this so God can hear our prayer. Come on, you want to pray? So you really don't want me. Hey, God wants you to repent. Okay. You want me to pray can, for can you. Pray you want you? me to. You can pray over there. You don't need to pray by me. You can go pray over there. Second commandment: No idols. This is idolatry. Long live the virgin. There you go. There you go. Exhibit A. Exhibit A. Right there. Exhibit A. Right there. Long live the virgin Mary.
Now you want to know why I did that? Idolatry right there. Idolatry right there. Idolatry right there. That is idolatry. That is idolatry. What's what's commandment number two? What's commandment number two? He doesn't know how to read. Huh? Tell me, what's commandment number two? Okay, and that's what that is. That's what that is. You go to any church and they're worshiping this. Yes, they are. You go to the Vatican, you go to the Vatican, there's a picture of St. Peter and St. Peter's foot had to be replaced because too many kisses from the Catholics and you guys are in the state of denial. You reject God. You reject the God of the Bible. You reject what God has said. Pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death, amen. Mary, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou, and Lord Jesus. They thought Jesus was crazy too. Why would you pray to Mary? Why would you pray to Mary? You can't pray to God, you have to pray to Mary? Why would you want to pray to Mary? She can't listen to you. You might as well go pray to a tree. You might as well pray to a rock. Oh, you reject Jesus. You reject Jesus. Now and at hour of our death, amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Crazy. Mother of God. You're loony. You're sick. You're sick. No, you are crazy. You are crazy. I'm crazy for God. No, you are nuts. Where's the word rosary in the Bible? Where's the word rosary? I, I wouldn't want to go with you. I wouldn't find the word purgatory in the Bible. Come with us and we'll teach you I wouldn't come with you. I know. No, you're going to send yourself to hell. I'm not, Why I'm would forgiven. I follow you? I'm forgiven. No, you're not. Jesus Christ made it very clear. The world cannot hate you, but me it hateth because I testify that the world is evil. When you testify that this world that we're living in is evil, you will be hated. And uh, I, don't, I don't find that a problem. Uh, as a matter of fact, in America, quite frankly, I don't think we're really persecuted. There's Christians that live in this country that are been in jail and beaten. Now you're talking a little persecution. There's Christians living in this actual date today in other countries that are being beheaded and burned. So slander my name, you're not gonna do much to me because my, my whole motive is pleasing God. And in the process, you will be offended in what I have to say. Oftentimes, as open air preachers, I'm always told, what's your motive for preaching to all these people, Reuben? What's your motive? By your own message, it doesn't sound like there's much love. The Bible teaches, uh, because of the terror of God, we persuade men. That's what the Apostle Paul said. Just simply because mankind is soon going to be facing hell fire, that should be enough motive to go out and preach. Now, what really bothers me is when young preachers feel obligated as if they have to tell everyone how much they love sinners. They'll say something like this, I came and drove three hours. That's how much I love you. You people don't understand how much I love you. We don't find anyone in the Bible saying, I love you, I care about you, please understand how far I had to travel. Forget about us. If you're gonna talk about the love, talk about God's love, not our love. It has nothing to do with us. I mean, do you really think a sinner is now gonna understand God's love because you say you loved him? My love for God is obedience, which is why I do what I do. 
So regardless of what people think about you, we're not there to make sure they understand we love them. If there's one thing they hopefully understand, it's God's love and how much mankind needs to love God by obeying God and not making me the issue of how much I gave up just because I love them. So many preachers, they just love to talk about, I'm here because I love you. I'm not like him. I'm not like this guy. Who cares who you're not like? Love is an act and we need to understand this. And hopefully you can take heed to that. Another point I'm often asked is, uh, Brother Robin, aren't you ever discouraged? There's not a lot of you guys when you go out and you preach in public. I mean, look at all the world and how many bodies there are and how many of you actually go out and preach. Uh, no, I'm not, in, I'm not discouraged at all. As a matter of fact, I can do much more with just a handful of men than I can with a whole army. Most people can't preach like I do. Why? Because they live in sin. Why? Because the log is still in their eye, which is why they can't preach against sin. I've had a person tell me, well, brother, I'm a Christian and I can sin a little bit. I can sin a little bit, Brother Reuben. Let's be fair. Fine, if you wish to sin a little bit, have it your way. But don't be surprised if on Judgment Day, God decides just to save a little bit of you. How about if God just save an eyelash and throw the rest of you in the hell? Was that fair? You can't say, I'm just gonna sin just a little bit. The reason why nobody wants to join us is because they're not living for God. So I don't want people to come out and join us being a bunch of hypocrites. You want virtue and power in your words. You gotta live for God. So I'm not dissatisfied if only five people show up when we go out and preach. Because I'd rather have three people who are serving God and living for God uh, actually do more for the kingdom of God because with virtue and power, they can preach what God wants done. So I'm not impressed with a large group. I don't need a Joel Osteen church. I would rather have a few men who are willing to give up their life, who are willing to walk holy before God and echo what God wants done to mankind. You give me those men, we'll shake up a city any day of the week and twice on Sunday. We're in South Central Los Angeles. Everybody thinks of LA, not everything that glitters in Los Angeles is gold. This is a place the police don't even want to hang around. Just to my left, you'll see some uh, candles. Looks like somebody just recently got shot right there. And uh, I hear sirens in the background. This is the projects. It don't get any worse than uh, Beirut around here. When there's a shooting, the police show up with no flashing lights, get the body and get out of here. And so uh, we have a tendency to preach where there's a lot of sin. This is one place that uh, has a lot of sin right here. Read the Bible there, people. Don't forget about Jesus Christ in your life. Most of you aren't gonna be going to church tomorrow. So God's bringing church to you tonight. We know, we know, we know somebody is going to die tonight. There's going to be a bullet out here with somebody's name on it. Is it going to be yours? Somebody is going to die tonight. The Bible makes it very clear. It is appointed on a man once to die and after this the judgment. Oh, that bullet may not even be for you. That bullet is going to hit you or somebody tonight. Are you ready to meet God? Are you ready to meet the God of the Bible who gave you life? And that God who gave you life can take that life from you tonight. You do not need to fear the police. 
You need to fear Almighty God. The Bible says, if you do not fear God, you don't have wisdom. You don't have knowledge. You don't have understanding. Let me tell you boys something. You're going to die and meet God just like I'm going to die and meet God. What matters is whether you believe in Jesus Christ and are you living for God. This is your wake-up call. You need to put down your drugs, put down your porno, put down your drinking, and surrender to Jesus Christ. Time for you to know the God of the Bible. Time for you to be a man and be faithful to your wife. Stop your fornication. Stop your adultery. Stop your drunkenness. If you think you can uh, believe in Jesus and live in sin, you believe a lie. Some of you guys do more Bible reading in jail. So maybe I ought to pray to God that you go back to prison. Maybe I ought to pray to God that you do some hard time. God is going to judge you and I when we die. There is no purgatory. There is no reincarnation. You live, you die, you meet God. Nothing complicated. And we know there's a bullet out there with somebody's name tonight. You just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time, but in God's timing, you have an appointment with death. Jesus Christ made it very clear. Except a man be born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Don't you play games with God? Don't you think you can sin all you want to and go to church on Sunday and give that pastor some blood money and think everything's okay between you and God? It doesn't work that way. Don't be so selfish. There is a judgment this side of heaven. You break the law, you go to jail. And rightly so. You break God's law, you go to hell fire. And rightly so. Time to repent and get right with God. This is your wake-up call. You know more music, you know more about rap music than you do the Word of God. Time for you to repent. Time for you to serve the living God. Time for you to stop calling young black girls hoes and stop calling each other nigger and repent of your sin and turn to the living God. You're not being a good image of God today. God didn't create you to kill your brother. God didn't create you to sell drugs to your brother. God didn't create you to rape your sister. Just because the college and school teach evolution doesn't mean you have to act like an animal. Jesus said, repent of your sin. Prepare to meet God. You people prepared for today. You got up from your hangover. You brushed your teeth. You took your drugs. You listened to your music. You're praying that you don't get caught in crime. That's how you prepared for the day. But have you prepared to meet God? something you need to consider before you die. If I could advise some of these upcoming preachers, I would say when you speak and preach, to talk slowly, okay? I don't see men of God in the Bible showing up in the city saying, hey, and another thing and God told you, speak slowly. The Bible says, be quick to hear and slow to speak. I know I'm taking the verse out of context. Speak slowly. Especially if you have a megaphone and you get so excited and you're moving that megaphone, let me tell you what you sound like. For God so, only that, for so ever. That's what you sound like when you use that megaphone. At least finish your sentence before you move that horn or you're preaching and nobody hears you. 
uh, uh, a good thing is uh, you have to have a brief message. And if your message is very brief and you recite it over and over, don't try to, uh, you know, have me say, wow, that's wonderful. Don't worry about trying to impress me with new lines. Jonah gave a message and he recited that message over and over and over. And so uh, your message should be brief and to the point because you have people walking. If they're standing around, you can make it a little bit longer. But uh, your message should be brief and to the point. I one time went into a, a city that I bumped into a guy that I preached at 12 years ago. And he tells me, man, 12 years ago, I heard you and you said the same exact thing 12 years ago. Why don't you come up with some new material? I said, why don't you repent and I'll give you some new material. I got tons of new material. Don't think for one second that's all I have, but I can't give it to you because you're still stuck on this first stuff. You need to repent and then I'll give you some more stuff. You haven't gone even baby steps, so you're going to get the same thing over and over. Don't try to impress me with new things. Don't try to impress the people that you're with. If God gave you a simple message, just preach it and be quick. There's some guys that want to give a 20 minute sermon and the only one that's really going to be edified are the 15 people on YouTube that watch it because the hundreds that have already walked by have no clue as to what you're saying. And so when you speak, act like you actually know what you're talking about and speak with authority. One of the things that I prayed for when I was a young Christian was a voice. I wanted God to give me a voice. I sought God for a voice. I dreamed that my lips were even the bell of a megaphone. That's how much I was into this. And he did. And I only have one functioning lung. The other one works, but I only have one functioning lung. I have to take a breather every once in a while and slow things down every once in a while. God only knows what would have happened if I had two lungs that really, that really could voice out things. My point is, slow things down. Speak as though you are speaking the actual words of God. I don't think men of God walked in there. And another thing, you don't need to do that. Also, there's things that I call fill-in words. Praise the Lord, glory to God, hallelujah. Uh, you don't need to do that in your preaching. We don't find men of God. And uh, praise the Lord, uh, let me tell you, hallelujah. Those are fill-in words. That's telling me that you really don't know what to say. And I know in some circles, the more fill-in words you have, the more righteous and holy you are. Doesn't do much for guys like me. Know what you say and say it. When these men of God walked into a city, they didn't say, hallelujah, glory to God, praise the Lord, thank you, Jesus. That has nothing to do with the message that you're going to be giving. And so know what you're going to say and say it. And uh, understand there's going to be a price for saying those things. Uh, but I say praise the Lord for that. Clean up your life. Repent of your sin. You talking to me? You talking to me? Man, you need to. This is the true gospel right here. God wants you to repent right now. No, that's what God wants you to do, man. He wants you to repent. What, you guys don't like glasses? What's wrong with you? You don't like glasses? You a little bit nervous about glasses? You need to be nervous about God. You need to be worried about God. I go to heaven. I go to heaven. That's what happens to me. I don't know about you guys. Why would you go to heaven? Tell me that. Why would God allow you into his heaven? Does the devil believe in him too? So does the devil go to heaven too? No, man. Where'd you get that thinking from? No, not everyone goes to heaven. Uh, you, 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 didn't, you were in heaven. Is that what you're telling me? Uh, this isn't heaven, man. This is South Central. This ain't heaven. This ain't hell. This is Los Angeles. Fellas, if you don't know where you're at, Google yourself and you'll find out where you're standing. This is South Central, man. Nothing. I can't believe we're talking about this. 
No wonder God brought us right here. Oh, somebody's going to die here tonight. You know, and I know, somebody's going to be dying here this evening. Why? Why? And then what's going to happen? What's going to happen to that person? Well, we hope it's none of us. I'm going to die. You're going to die. Jesus Christ died for you on the cross. He bled for you on the cross. He rode for you on the cross. You know that. Language. Watch your language, young man. One more cuss word like you, we're going to pack up South Central and go to East L.A. No more cussing. No more cussing. You're weak. Jesus Christ can make you strong. Jesus Christ can make you whole. The Bible says God can make you normal. God can make you holy. He's watching you like a hawk. The eyes of the Lord are everywhere and God is watching you. God is watching you. Believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who died, who bled, who rose from the dead for you. What does God require of you? Repent and believe. What a loving God to offer you eternal life. What a loving God like no other God to offer His Son as a ransom for you. <laughs> hey, you got to be a street preacher, man. You got to, that's pretty, that's a good line. That's all right. I, I'm not a suicide bomber, man. That's a, that's a Muslim for you. I'm a Christian. I don't want to kill people. If somebody blew you up, you would probably most likely wind up in hell. This is what Christians are doing. We're trying to beckon you to the kingdom of God, not take your life. That's the reality, fellas. Well, that's why God's bringing his church to you, because you guys aren't going to Sunday school. You need to start going to Sunday school. You read the Bible every day? You read the Bible every day? Yeah, what did you read today? What did you read today? Well, then, uh, why don't you tell me what you read yesterday? If you read it, tell me what it says. You wouldn't be lying to me now. I mean, God could be listening to this conversation. What are you concerned about the police? Why? Only a criminal's concerned about the police. Why, are you, are you a criminal? You, do I need to walk over there and check some ID? Do I need to go over there right now and check out some ID? You don't need to fear the police, young man. You need to fear Almighty God. That's who you need to fear. Almighty God. We, we want you to stay out of hell. We don't want you to go to hell. Three more hours? Uh, what you plan on doing in three hours? What do you plan on doing in three hours that you can't do in two minutes? Huh? Oh, come on. What can't you do in three hours? What are you guys, union gang members? You're not on the clock yet? This is the reality, people. We're all going to live. We're all going to die. We're all going to meet Jesus Christ. Time to know the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Who will die for you. Who gave his life for you. What a loving God. To offer you eternal life. Do not give up on God. The Bible says repent. If you want forgiveness of your sin, you need to repent. Without repentance, there is no forgiveness. Let's understand that very, very clear. You want forgiveness, you must repent. We're here because Mama and Grandma has been praying for you guys, and we're an answer to their prayer. God's getting sick and tired, and you can't play games with God any longer. Except a man be born again, 
he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's what God says. Keep that music down. We're having a service out here. Believe in Jesus Christ. Heaven and earth will pass away. God's word will not pass away. If anyone needs to cry out to God, do it now or forever hold your peace. Jesus said, if you're ashamed of me in this adulterous and sinful generation, likewise will I be ashamed of you before the Father and the holy angels. Oh, you're not ashamed of the Lakers. You're not ashamed of the Dodgers. You're not ashamed of a gang. You're not ashamed of a lot of things. But are you ashamed of Jesus Christ? And do you live for Jesus Christ? Titus 1.16 says, They profess to know God, but in works they deny Him. Is Titus 1.16 speaking about you? Oh, you play games with God on Sunday, but come Saturday night, that music's loud, you're dancing, you're getting drunk, you're committing fornication, you're taking drugs. Who are you playing? Cry out to God, and perhaps He will save someone like you today. Today is the day of salvation. Repent and obey the gospel. Thank God the street preacher showed up. Thank God the street preacher showed up. Now you're without excuse, guys. Remember, if we're not back in two hours, whatever you're going to do, start without us. <laughs> My message, since the first time I started preaching until today, is to know the God of the Bible. That's my message. Uh, you say you know God, uh, I'll refute that. The Bible teaches in Titus, they profess to know God, but they deny Him. In works, they deny Him. So a lot of people have an understanding of God, but do they know this? And that seems to be the problem. And so uh, my message primarily is to know the God of the Bible. If you're an unbeliever, you need to get born again. If you're a Christian, you need to live by this. If you're involved in a religious cult, uh, we'll call that sin out. My message is very simple. Expose the problem, give the remedy. Grace, you better have uh, uh, the law first. You want forgiveness, it's going to take repentance. And uh, if you want to give your life to the Lord, uh, I demand fruits that meet for repentance. If you're a smoker, uh, I want those cigarettes gone. I've been known uh, on certain streets and certain events to dump beer out. I've been known to pat people down like police do. You've got a cigarette, there's got to be a lighter in there some way. Hand it over. And so I demand fruits meet for repentance. Or don't waste my time, because I'm not going to waste God's time. And if, you, and if a cigarette or a lighter is going to be something you cling on to, you don't want God. Because He wants your whole body, your whole mind, your whole soul. And so uh, my whole message is very simple. Repent and believe. That's the order of appearance. Today's modern church says, believe and repent. The order of appearance has always been repent and believe. And I make it very clear. God doesn't want you just the way you are. As a matter of fact, God doesn't want mankind at all the way we are, which is why the order of appearance is repent and believe. Read the Bible, everybody. Don't forget about Jesus Christ in your life, heaven or hell when you die. There's a real God. There's a real judgment day. Stop caring for the things of the world. Stop coveting the world. Stop coveting wickedness and start coveting a holy God. You'll see tons of limos. <laughs> Heaven or hell when you die, believe in Jesus Christ. Don't wind up in hell fire when you die. Judgment day, 
One time you live, one time you die, one time you meet God. Money is not evil. The Bible says the love of money is the root of all wickedness. The love of money is the root of all evil. The love of money is sin. How many more millions can a person have? What will a person do for more money? They'll give away their body, they'll sell their soul for money. Most of you don't want to believe in Jesus Christ for one simple reason. Because the gospel is free. It's free when you repent. Believe in Jesus the Christ, the Son of God, who died on you on the cross for your sins, who rose from the dead, and who's coming back one day to judge you. Time for you to repent. I hope you're not on this list. You're going to die and meet God there, fellas. You need to believe in Jesus Christ. Don't wind up in hell fire. Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God who died and bled for you. So this part of the area is private property. Uh, Anything outside of this stitches. Tell you what, go ahead and get BHPD out here because mm -hmm. I don't believe you. It is. You want to bet? Yeah. But that's why these things are here for. Go ahead and call them. Become a new creation in Christ. Read the Bible, believe in Jesus Christ. Don't forget, he's died for you on the cross. Must be a slow night tonight or something? Huh? Must be a slow night or something? Says the private property. I can show you the plaque is right there. Yeah. I'd, I'd rather get a black and white out here, you know. Yeah, yeah, they'll come out here and, and iron it out. You, you do understand, sometimes we've been lied to by security, and I know you're probably just doing your job. But if black and white comes out here, that kind of makes it official. It's just outside of that, or even if you was on that little light part, you would be okay. Yeah. But where this little, whatever material this is, it's private property. Yeah. And you're probably right, but we'll just wait until the black and white shows up. Okay, that's no Yeah, problem. not a problem. I don't go out to 10 o'clock. I got nothing but time, right? You, well, you, you, but do you got time before you meet Jesus Christ? Oh, that's it. Yeah. Read your Bible, believe in Jesus Christ. Don't wind up in hellfire when you die. Hellfire when you die. One, two, you look like about a five on a good day. But all you have to be is one and you're in trouble, man. I'll be in trouble. You will be in trouble. Why? Well, because you're gonna meet a holy God and this is what he says he will put in the hell fire. You're not allowed in his kingdom if you do this. See, in America, if you want to be a citizen of this country, you have to go by the proper channels. Then you can be a citizen. Otherwise, you get deported. Same principle applies with God. You want to go into God's kingdom and you do this? Go on the land. God does. Do you know God? Yeah, of course I know. What God do you know? Huh? What God do you know? There is only one God. Well, everybody says they know God. Uh, yeah. Muslims tell me they know God. Yeah. Are you Muslim? Yeah, I'm Muslim. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Um, I don't know. I'm not with the religion stuff. I mean, not with religion. But, I mean, but do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? I believe so. The Christian, the Muslim, and the Jews, they have the same God. No, they don't. There, Muslims are trying to kill Jews. Yeah, how can they, how can you have the same God? Well, I mean, we're in America. You don't find that in America. You go you go to the Middle East and you'll see that. I will see. I'll tell you one thing. Don't depend your idea about group on conservative or I mean, on conservative people. Let's say, and and every religion they will see conservative. You will see very tough. I mean, very. I don't know how to tell you, but you will see these people who are very, very conservative and they think they are only the uh, who are who is right. But right? your religion so, tells you that Jesus so. is not the Son of God. That's what Muslims believe. That's what Muslims believe. They believe he's yeah. a good man, they believe he's a prophet, but not the Son of God. So I'm asking you one more time. No. Is Jesus believe, the Son of God? Believe, no, no. Do you believe in, in diversity? God. In who? The diversity? No. Religion so you believe only man. one thing can That's right. diversity, one... This is it. Jesus. Not many ways. This is it. Do you have kids? 
Yes, of course I do. Do they think in the same way? Yeah, absolutely. 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 And nobody comes to the Father if not by Him. Tell me, is He a prophet? Is Muhammad a prophet? Yeah. What did he say that came to pass that made him a prophet? I mean... Tell me, uh, no. if you're going to call yourself a prophet, you must have said something and had it come to pass to be a prophet. What did Muhammad say that came to pass that made him a prophet? Did you read? I'm asking you. I don't... I, I believe he's a liar. I don't know. I don't know because I didn't read. I was, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I'm, I'm a Muslim, but I'm not that deep in Muslim because I'm not with the religion. I might go on this way, and you might go on this way. We're gonna meet there. Read the Bible there, guys. Heaven or hell when you die. You're gonna wind up in hellfire if you don't repent of your sin. Huh? Well, then you ought to repent. That's what you need to do. You ought to repent. Everything that you're looking at is going to corrupt. You understand that? Everything that you're looking at is going to corrupt. How about looking towards the kingdom of God? How about setting your treasure in heaven where nobody can take it away from you? You're going to get old. Your body's going to get wrinkled. You are going to die. You are going to have an illness. And you think this is all, the only heaven you have? The Bible says you need to be born again. God doesn't want you the way you are. God demands that you be born again. Time for you to repent and know the God of the Bible. Get serious about Jesus Christ. Don't wind up in hell fire when you die. You on this list? If you're a Muslim, you go straight to hell because you reject Jesus as the Son of God. If you're a Hebrew, what happened to your temple? Moses commands blood sacrifice. Jesus Christ is our Lamb of God who took away the sin of the world. That doesn't give you license to sin. He took it away. He wants you to repent. Money will not save you. Your bank account will not salvage your soul. Time for you to get serious about God. Time for you to know the God of the Bible. Time for you to get off that camel and stop trying to go through the eye of the needle. Time for you to repent of your sin. Without Jesus Christ, you will burn in hell. The Bible says, repent or perish. Perish does not mean you're going to stay in a Catholic church. Perish means God's going to remove you and you will burn for all eternity. This is your wake-up call. Jesus Christ said, if you are ashamed of me, he's going to be ashamed of you. Jesus Christ said, if you confess him before man, he will confess you before the Father and the holy angels. You got Bibles in your hotel room. There's no reason for you not to know the God of the Bible. You got Bibles everywhere. You come here to shop and God's talking Bible. You open a drawer inside of your hotel room and there's a Bible. Maybe God's trying to get your attention. This is the city of the angels. Time for you to repent. You have more in common with demons than you do angels. You have much more in common with darkness than light. Repent and obey the God of the Bible who will save your soul from hell fire. What happened to uh, BHPD? Well, pretty much, there's so many words. As long as you don't go past these two poles, you're okay. See? But hey, I, you're just doing your job. I understand that. Heaven or hell when you die, don't forget about Jesus Christ. Oh my God. I know. Oh my God. That's right. Oh my God. God puts drunkards, homos, 
Atheist inside the lake of fire. But that he was God or is God. That's why they sent him up to the hill. Welcome to Los Angeles. You got Bibles in your hotel room. Tomorrow is Sunday. I expect you to go to church someplace in Los Angeles. Hopefully a church that you bring your Bible and you read along. God is trying to get your attention. You've been looking for God. God says repent and believe on his son, Jesus Christ, who died for you on the cross. Heaven or hell when you die. There is a real judgment day. There is a real heaven. It all takes place when you die. Hope you're not involved in any of this sin. You involved in any of this right here? You need to do something. You need to do something. You need to do something about it. Repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Time for you to know the God of the Bible. He's going to judge you by this word. Not on what you think or how you feel. Yes, no, is that in the Catholic Bible? Jesus Christ. Read the Bible, everybody. Don't forget about Jesus Christ in your life. It's going to be kind of important knowing you will die. I don't know why you don't take the best deal in town. Jesus Christ dying for you, bleeding for you, rose from the dead for you and you walk away like nothing. Heaven or hell when you die, believe in Jesus Christ. Buddha dead, Jesus alive. You saw the worst part of Los Angeles and this is the best part of Los Angeles. They have one thing in common, they need a Messiah. And so uh, that we bring them. And uh, what a great fishing hole I live in. Los Angeles. So next time you think about a Hollywood event, understand there's Christians out there preaching against that thing. You may not ever know that, but uh, we are saints in the city of the angel. The reason why California isn't an island is because people like us, there's a remnant like us that are out there. And in God's great wisdom, he decides to salvage not only our city, but our state. And uh, uh, the Bible says you need to preach in Jerusalem before you start working on the uttermost parts of the world. You need to be faithful in your own city. How faithful are you in your own neighborhood? So uh, maybe you see some videos and you want to fly to another country or another state. How faithful are you in your own city? For heaven's sake, be faithful, be a beacon in your own city. Welcome to Los Angeles. God's trying to get your attention. Even in your hotel rooms, you've got a Bible. Make sure you read it. Now let me ask you this, where is purgatory in the Bible? Read the Bible there, guys. Don't forget about heaven or hell when you die. You want to go to heaven, it's only through Jesus Christ, not by anything you can do. Time to repent and know the Jesus Christ of the Bible. 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 Oftentimes we're criticized that nobody gets saved. And so uh, we do have testimonies of people actually crying out to Jesus. In fact, we have videotape of it. Oftentimes, the same people that accuse us that nobody gets saved, when we do show these videos, now we're accused of boasting because people get saved. I say it doesn't matter. And let me make something very clear. If I preach for 50 years and not one person gets saved, it's not going to affect my method because I know what I'm doing is pleasing to God. And so uh, uh, my method isn't necessarily to reap that harvest. I pray somebody else can do that. My method is to plant seed, water seed, fertilize that seed so that somebody else can pick that harvest. Unfortunately, we live in a, in a, in a window where the guy with the basket who has the basket full of fruit is telling the guy who's uh, 
who's uh, raking up the dirt. Where's your fruit? Look at my basket. It's full. You're not doing anything. Actually, we're a little bit upset about that as Christians because Jesus Christ told his disciples, you've entered into another man's uh, uh, labor. And so you've entered into our labor. That guy accepted Christ because of all the years of God trying to uh, wean that seed. And so it's not what you've said. It's not that you were so inspired. It's just simply that God is now having his perfect will done. Something that he requires of all men, not just that individual. Living in Los Angeles is a, is a very interesting theater because uh, we get a chance to uh, witness and preach to celebrities. Uh, not only at the Academy Awards, the Grammy Awards, Golden Globe Awards, uh, oftentimes uh, we bumped into them just walking down the street. And so uh, most Christians are a little starstruck when they see them. Can I take a picture with you? Isn't that so and so? Uh, they're just a regular sinner to me. And so I don't treat them in any other way, but they're just a regular sinner. And so from Elizabeth Taylor, to uh, you know, uh, numerous uh, 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 celebrities. The problem is, I don't watch much TV. I don't go to the uh, movies, so I don't know who these people are. Oftentimes, paparazzi will hang around us, knowing that we will get the reaction from the black limos that pass by us, and usually they do. Uh, one time at a music award, Elton John stuck his whole body out of the uh, the limo, and he's cussing and swearing and calling me a hater and everything else. Then he gets back in his car and they speed off. And I didn't even get a chance to say anything. In fact, after he drove by, I looked at the guy next to me and I said, was that Elton? Was, was, was he upset with our sign? I mean, I thought he was a loving guy. Uh, but uh, I'm, not starstruck, st I'm not starstruck by these people. In fact, most celebrities live a very horrible life. They can't go to Walmart. They can't go shopping. They're thronged with people. Their life consists of marriage, divorce, fornication, sodomy, rehab, drug addiction, suicide. That's not glamorous. Not everything that glitters in Los Angeles is gold. As a matter of fact, their lives are pathetic. And if you look up to the, these celebrities, uh, you're in bad shape. The real stars are in the Bible. Yeah, oftentimes when we come across these celebrities, we kind of use their names. Uh, once we were at the Academy Award and Ted Turner and Jane Fonda were caught in traffic, so they got out of the limo and they're walking right by me. And so uh, I instantly started jumping on Jane Fonda and I started preaching against Jane Fonda that God's not too fond of you and God's gonna throw you into hell because of what you believe and you, you're not fond of God. Well, uh, you know, of course, Ted Turner jumps in the way and he wants to be the he-man and block us off. Same thing with Larry King. Uh, you know, uh, Larry King, when you see him alive, looks like a skeleton, a dead man. Whoever puts the makeup work on this guy when he's on his TV program, they ought to get an, a nomination for an Academy Award. And he came by and I'm rebuking him that Jesus Christ is the King of Kings, Larry. You're gonna die and meet him. Your king is, is over when you die. Jesus' kingdom is, is eternal. And of course, you know, he uh, turned around and said some stuff. Uh, and so it's a blessing to come across these type of guys. Politicians, Barney Franks, I bumped into about uh, two years ago. And he and I went nose to nose. And I wasn't expecting that. We were just setting up our banners and uh, I heard a ruckus and I turned around and I heard somebody say, there's Barney Frank. I didn't say, what do I do, Lord? Are you kidding? I jumped right in there and confronted this guy. I was quick. I knew what to do. If God put him in front of me, God expects me to follow up on that and that's exactly what I did. And Barney, boy, I've never heard a homosexual get so upset. Barney was so upset, the guys that were with him, his security guys were pulling him away. But he and I almost touched noses, that's how close we were. And so I enjoy what I am, and, and to show that God is blessing what we do, he has us come across some of these celebrities. And 
some of these celebrities, after we meet, commit suicide. So it's like God trying to get their attention. We're like that warning light on your dashboard that's irritating and bugging you and you try to cover it up, but that flashing light is there. You're in trouble if you don't take care of that. Oftentimes, certain people are attracted to what it is that we do and uh, it, it has been uh, unique because uh, over the past couple of decades, God seems to be attracting a lot of young single men into doing what we're doing. And uh, uh, I praise the Lord for those single men because uh, uh, God requires much of them. They're single, uh, they get to uh, go out. And so oftentimes when we're on trips and we're in a van together, I have a uh, opportunity to pick their brain and talk to them about what they want to do. Many of these guys enjoy being single. Some of these guys are looking for a wife. And so uh, I ask them what kind of wife they're looking for. Of course, they want uh, one that can cook and clean and sew and look like Barbie. Uh, and after I find out what they're looking for, I ask them, well, what do you have to put on the table? Why do you think you can have some woman who can do all this when what do you actually have to offer? Your good looks, your charm? I mean, single men, how good are you at saving money? If you can't save money, how do you expect to help raise a family and children? If you can't even maintain a job for a year, I don't even think married, being married should even be in your vocabulary. Uh, if you can't live a disciplined life, you're not going to be able to discipline the weaker vessel and your children. And so uh, there's a verse in the Bible that says all things are, should be done decently and in order. When I was a young man, that Bible verse influenced my life. My house is in order. My business is in order. My work van is in order. Everything is in order. It's not just when I go out and preach. Some guys, they live like a mess. Just like their doctrine, just like their Christianity, it's a mess. They get married, they need counseling within six months. And so uh, my advice to you single guys is to be content being single because you can do more for the kingdom of God than married guys like me. In fact, you ought to be running circles around married guys like me. The Bible says a married man cares for the things of the world. Because I'm married, I have to have a wife and a kid and a home and things to make my wife happy. You're not. You should be uh, uh, living in a car, quite frankly, as far as I'm concerned, as a Matthew 10 Christian that gives up everything. And so uh, for you single guys, if you're looking for that Barbie that can cook and sew, and you don't even know how to fix a broken window, how are you going to handle things when, when, you, when your child busts a window? You can't even uh, flush a, a toilet and fix a float inside of a toilet. What do you have to offer before you get this Barbie doll uh, uh, woman that you believe God's going to send you? I say you need to clean that up. And for you men who are married, uh, let me give you a little piece of advice. Uh, for years, I've been married to my wife. And what a woman she is. Uh, when I come into the home after I've been preaching and slashing people all day long with my sword, the last thing I want to do is pick up my sword and start slashing my wife. As soon as I shut that door, I don't tell her, you're not going to believe what happened. How many times you tried to kill me? I almost got arrested. I close that door and my home is a refuge. It's where I can relax and there's peace and safety. And my wife has done that for me. And so uh, you have to understand, if my wife wants to talk about a current event, a price for carrots, uh, what the dog did today, as far as I'm concerned, I'm into this story as if this is the gospel itself. And that's the least we can do for our wives, gentlemen. My wife has to put up with a lot to be married to a guy like me. You think your wife has issues? She'd have issues married to a guy like me. Let's face it, most women want their husbands to be elders and shining stars among saints. 
they don't like to see their husbands walk out the door knowing they're going to be mocked, spit at, jailed, might get injured out there. No wife in her right mind wants to have to happen. So when you have a wife who's actually able to support you, you better treat her as Christ treated the church. You shouldn't be preaching at her the way you do to heathen in the street. You need to shift gears. And I advise you, if you can't handle things back home, you should have no business going out on the street. You need to take care of your Jerusalem first before you start heading out of that street. And so uh, you can take this and a cup of coffee and have breakfast. Uh, but understand this, if you want virtue in your words, you got to live it. And so I'm very thankful I have a wife who supports me. And if you ever noticed, you're never going to see my wife. Not on Facebook, not on YouTube, not on blogs, not on, uh, you know, she doesn't do much. Some wives feel they need to stand with their husbands. Some wives feel they got to go on the internet and clarify everything their husband said. I know he wrote this, but this is what he meant. As though their husband can't even understand English or communicate English properly. Some wives feel they are obligated or like the Holy Ghost to be there. My wife enjoys being home and having things prepared so when I come home. And I, that's a glorious thing for me. And so, uh, have you ever noticed we don't find much of uh, Peter's wife mentioned anywhere? In fact, most of the apostles, their wives are not mentioned for a reason. Uh, saints, if you say you're hated, like I'm hated, you will understand not to bring your wife around because uh, you don't want her to get the same hate mail I get. In fact, usually when I preach, a re I do a report for my preach, I rarely even tell you the churches that we work with because of all the hate mail I get, I don't want it to be funneled to them. And so uh, when you don't see my wife, it's not like I'm hiding her and she's duct taped in a chair wanting to come out with me. She enjoys her function as just being part of the body of Christ and, and being my helpmate and not necessarily my mouthpiece. And uh, with that, we're a dynamic duel. And you have to understand, uh, I don't have my wife's face shown or talked about because of all the real hate mail I get. You think you get hate mail, I'm sure you do, but when you deal with religious people the way I do, uh, they want to kill for their God. And my wife doesn't go out because she realizes sometimes I might be more of a distraction, wondering about her and not being focused. And so she thought it'd be best not to go out and preach with me. And so, uh, uh, but if you notice, most of the real players in the Bible, you don't really hear much of their wives for a reason. If you're a single guy, I say learn to disciple your life and your money because you can't do that if you can't be faithful with having a job. I know Christians that go from job to job to job. I have to wonder if it was my daughter you were going to marry, I'd give you a thumbs down. Uh, I would want to see a little bit more discipline in your life. But if you're a married guy, you need to honor your wife. And remember, when you come in that door, forget about what happens. No need to brag about that. No need to tell your wife. Real soldiers don't come home and say, Hey, honey, I just shot somebody today. Hey, honey, I blew up something today. They kind of just keep it to themselves. That's a real soldier. And so uh, my wife, uh, sometimes she hears about stuff only maybe at the kitchen table, or maybe she happens to read something over the Internet. But for the most part, when I come home, I'm into whatever my wife wants to talk. And that's the least I can do for her to put up with someone like me. And so uh, that's a little bit of advice from your Uncle Reuben, and I hope you take it to heart. God bless you. Have you people lost your mind? Have you took advantage of the mercy and grace of God? You say you love God, you despise God. You despise a holy God. It is obvious to God you hate God. You love darkness. You love sin. You love drunkenness. You love sin. You despise a holy, righteous God. Repent and believe. Repent now. Cry out to God. Believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, who even died for you, who even bled for you, who even rose from the dead for you.
for you and you reject him. You purposely wield against the will of God. God's will is none should perish. God doesn't want you to perish. But you will burn in hell and you have no one to blame but you. I would like to address some of you upcoming uh, street preachers. You have to understand you're not going to be a pulpit preacher. Uh, you're not going to preach in very nice places. As a matter of fact, where God will send you, it's going to be a little bit dirty. Unfortunately, most ministers see their flock dressed nice, looking nice, smelling nice on Sunday, but we see them from Monday through Saturday at any given place, on any given marketplace. And so uh, uh, that flock is a mess. And uh, you have to understand when you preach open air, it's not gonna be glamorous. Uh, unfortunately, God's gonna send you into the filth, the uh, wickedness. You're gonna understand why even at one point, God resented even making mankind. And so you need to count the cost. There's nothing glamorous. There's nothing wonderful and beautiful. It's not, uh, you can forget about being a missionary to Hawaii. If you're gonna be an open air preacher, your hands are gonna get dirty because the field that you're gonna plow is filthy. You're gonna look at sin in a whole different way. As a matter of fact, if you're a good street preacher, you're gonna hate sin. You're gonna despise sin. You're not just gonna dislike it. You're gonna understand why God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah and why God destroyed the world with, with water and flood. And so uh, if you're a young open air preacher, this is what you're gonna have to look up to. This is gonna be the, the, the field in which you're gonna be plowing in. And you need to rejoice in that and understand you're gonna be hated, despised, and jailed even working in a place like this. Because one day, I'm going to die, and I'm going to be with the Lord, and all this will be yours. God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day of every week, of every month, of every year, you people are angering a holy, righteous God. Time for you to get serious about God, who will put you in the hellfire when you die, and rightly so. Shame on you. God in heaven is watching you. You think you can sit all you want to and get ashes tomorrow? You think that you can fool God? You've lost your mind. You hate God. You despise God. And you're going to wind up in a hellfire when you die. You deserve the God of the Bible to throw you in the hell. Time for you to repent. You're a sicko. A rocko. The reason I preach about sin in hell is uh, uh, sin uh, is the reason why we're all going to die. Now what happens after we die is a big question. Jesus Christ made it very clear, heaven or eternal fire. So they all work hand in hand. Uh, we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of God, and evidence of our sin is we're going to die. Uh, be it you just told one lie in, in 90 years, God considers that worthy enough to have you die. We need to do something about that. And so we have to point out the sin. When you go see a doctor, he doesn't just say, take this medication. He shows you a blood test. He gives you the x-ray. He gives you reason to take that prescription or you're not gonna take that pill every morning. And so the same thing applies with Jesus Christ. You have to point out sin. If all we say is Jesus loves you, that sinner is going to walk away saying thank you. The issue is, if they die in their sin, they go to hell. And if there's one thing I want to make very clear to people, after they are encountered with me, they understand that. It is crystal clear. You reject God, you die in your sin, you go to hell. I make no bones about it. I don't apologize for it. As a matter of fact, Jesus Christ spoke more on that eternal fire than almost any other subject 
uh, even combined. That was his emphasis. The man burning in, in Abraham's bosom, he wanted to come out and warn his family of that place. He, didn't come, he wasn't going to come out and say, God loves you. He was going to warn them not to go in that place. All right, people, let's listen up. You've been playing too many games with God. How many times have you took advantage of God and churches and Christianity, and yet you continue to go back to drugs, prostitution, drinking? Stop playing games with God. It's time you need to repent and realize Drinking is not your friend. Drugs is not your friend. Look at what it's done to you. You have no one to blame but yourself. You can't blame the devil. You can't blame God. Oh, every night you line up, you come to Christianity, they clean you up, and then you go right back to the vomit. You're playing games with God. You need to stop playing games with God. Oh, you know when you need some help, you go to Christianity. You run to a Christian facility. But is there any remorse for your sin in the morning? Or do you go back to the same sin? Time for you to repent. Time for you to get serious about God. Some of you guys are still in bondage to Whitey. It's not the plantation owner, but you're still in bondage to Whitey. It's that white cigarette that hangs out of your mouth. You're still in bondage to Whitey. Jesus Christ can set you free. You need to stop playing games with God. How many times have you heard God loves you? How many times have you heard Jesus loves you? How about you loving God? How about you loving what God loves? Jesus said, if you love him, you will obey him. That means stop being a prostitute. That means stop sticking a needle in your arm. That means stop uh, taking drugs, drinking, smoking. You need to be born again as the Bible says. And I'm talking to you. You may not hear this from the mission because they need some government aid. But right now, you need to repent and get right with God. How many people you know died last month? And there's no guarantee you're going to make it in the morning. Let's make sure of one thing. You will die. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. You think drugs are your best friend? Uh, look at what drugs have done to your life. Look at what drugs have done to your life. Here I am right here, tough guy, do something. Here I am right here, tough guy, do something. Maybe that's that booze talking. Maybe that's that booze talking. You need to get some Holy Ghost and have some Holy Ghost do some talking. You think drugs is your best friend? Time for you to get cleaned up with Jesus Christ. Time for you to get cleaned up with God. Time for you to get that blood of Jesus Christ and repent of your sin. Been smoking some dope? Look at where that drug has brought you. Look around you. And some of you think this is hell. Some of you think when you die, you've already done your time in hell. This ain't hell, people. This is downtown Los Angeles. This ain't hell. Time for you to repent and get right with God. Stop smoking dope. Stop shooting that heroin. Stop drinking. Stop smoking. Stop your fornication. Stop lying. God demands you to be holy right now. Get born again right now. You got a problem with the God I'm talking about? I just wonder what gives you the right to tell people what to do. Well, God does. God gives me God the right. To you? Absolutely. It's in this book. 
And if you don't clean up your life, young man, you're going to die in your sin. Don't blame your parents. Don't blame the government. Don't, don't blame, blame the devil. The only one you need to blame is you. That's right. You. Look at where your sin has brought you. What? Look around what? you. What? What did Look it bring at where me? you're at. Nowhere. What? Your sin what? didn't bring you anywhere. Jesus Christ can save you from your sin, what? but you want to go back to your sin. What sin? What sin? Look around you. Open your eyes. What sin? You define sin. You tell me what should be. Read the Bible, people. God says don't be a liar. Repent now. Hell awaits you. This ain't hell. This is downtown L.A. Don't think this is hell. People aren't burning. People aren't screaming. You still get a chance to repent. And you need to do it right now. You better watch yourself there, young man. You're going to get hit by that bus. You're going to get hit by that bus. And I don't think you're ready to meet God right now. I don't think you're ready to meet God. Watch yourself. You're going to get hit by a car. You need to get born again. You need to get right with God. You need to obey God. You need to love God. Time for you to serve the God of the Bible. Repent and know the God of the Bible. This is your wake-up call, people. Drugs haven't done very well for you. Sin is only for a season, and then you pay the price. And then you pay the price. God is your salvation. Jesus Christ is your salvation. And you can't say you believe in Jesus because the Bible says the devil believes in Jesus Christ. If you believe in Jesus Christ, your life needs a change. Most people will go to hellfire. Unfortunately, that's the reality. And you have had Christianity every day and every night. Well, when it's dark time, you don't go to a Muslim temple. You don't go to a Jewish synagogue. You don't go to a Hare Krishna temple. You come to Christianity. Fact of the matter is, you've taken advantage of God's Christian grace and love and charity. God is telling you right now, stop playing games. Stop playing games with God. Time to repent. Look at what this drug has done to you. Living in sin. Living in sin is not what God has wanted to do for you. You need to repent. Clean up your life for heaven's sake. You break the law, you get the police take you to jail. And rightly so. You break God's law, you go to hell fire. That's what the Bible says. You break the law, you go to jail. You break God's law, you go to hell fire when you die. You better understand that. Time for you to repent. Why don't you exchange that cardboard box for a mansion in the sky? Why don't you repent of your sin and turn to a living, holy God who created the world in six days and who can rewire your thinking in one second? But it takes a component. It takes you. You have to repent of your sin. The problem is, we say by grace. that's right, doesn't mean you get to sin more. Grace doesn't mean you get to sin more. How many Bible verses can you quote? How many, how many Bible verses can you quote, but are you living that life? Many of them. Are you living that life? Are you living that life? What did you read to this morning? What did you read this morning? Three on point at you, sir. What did you read this morning? If you read Proverbs, you ought to read a cruel messenger is sent to a rebellious people. Proverbs 17. Stop playing games with God. You've been playing games with God way too long. You are reaping what you have sown this side of heaven. Repent and get right with God. He's going to judge you when you die. Know the God of the Bible. Jesus Christ said, except a man be born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. That's a condition to salvation, not going to church. You need to be born again. And if you still live in the same life you've been living since you think you were born again, something's wrong with you. You're not a new creature. 
If you're still living in sin, wallowing in sin, going back to that vomit, you need to repent. You're playing games with a holy God. Time for you to repent and repent of your sin now. You need to have some conviction. Some of you can sin all day and don't even have any conviction. Time for you to repent. You run away from home. You run away from church. You run away from God. Time for you to repent and go to the God of the Bible. Time to get serious about the God of the Bible. Time for you to repent and know the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Stop your drugs. Stop your lying. Stop your fornication. And repent today. Today is the day of salvation. Uh, in my Christian life, I've been arrested more as a Christian than as a heathen. As a matter of fact, as a heathen, I was pretty much a, a good person. I had wonderful parents that taught me well, but as a Christian, I've lost count as to how many times I've been arrested. Public nuisance, trespassing, obscene words, disturbing the peace. Uh, I was even arrested in Mardi Gras for being drunk in public. Uh, they said nobody can do what I was doing without being absolutely blitzed. Uh, there was no blood test taken, there was no urine test, no breathalyzer. They just threw a charge at me. Sir, uh, sir, sir, I'm an eyewitness to what happened. You got the man arrested. Uh, we just got released from uh, jail. Uh, evidently, uh, of course, we were falsely accused and uh, we were told uh, that we were criminals and uh, they said they could have given us this citation out there, but because the environment was too hostile, they decided to cuff us, throw us in the back of a squad car and drag us here and then chain us to a wall. And then uh, when he finally got all of our information, uh, we, they said that, uh, that this is what we get, uh, disturbing the peace. They said we were first accused of uh, a battery, assault, but now uh, they dwindle it down to a disturb, uh, disturbing the peace. So uh, how can anyone disturb the peace during Mardi Gras yeah. around the homo area is beyond me. But uh, uh, I guess this is uh, my birthday present for 30, yeah. for 30 years of coming to uh, uh, Mardi Gras. And uh, what a better gift than to have <laughs> this brother from Jeremy uh, to be sitting in the back of a squad car with. And so um, I have no animosity. I'm ready to go and have a little break and have some coffee. And then I'm going to go back and preach again. And uh, we're going to do this for Jesus. Oh, there goes the neighborhood. Here comes the Christians. There goes the neighborhood. Did I whine and complain and say I'm going to sue you? It's, I count it worthy. Uh, I'm excited when I get arrested. I praise God. Let me tell you, there is nothing in sitting in a cell knowing that you're guilty for preaching. I rejoice when handcuffs rip my wrists. I rejoice when a police puts his hand on, his, on my head and says, watch your head as he bangs me into the squad car. I rejoice sitting in the back seat uh, when the temperature is over 100 degrees and you're sweating. I count it worthy. In my mind, I'm not saying I'm going to sue you. In my mind, I'm not saying I'm getting attorneys. That'll all happen in due time. As I'm sitting there with those cuffs ripping into my wrist, I rejoice. And I'm not one of these guys who say, I've been arrested this time. I was, I don't know how many times. I've lost count. All I know is it's more than once and less than a million times. And the number keeps coming. Your booze is not your best friend. Look at where your booze has brought you. 
Look at where your drugs have taken you. Look at where your sin has drugged you. Time for you to repent and obey God. Oh, you're saying this is just a little bit of clean sin. Look at this filth. This isn't clean. It's wicked and abominable. And this is a small portion of what's in your heart, which is why you need to get born again, as the Bible says. How many of you are stealing and robbing? How many of you are having sex for money? Stealing something for money only to buy drugs or booze? You need to repent and get right with God. Get right with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ bled for you, not for that you can continue to sin, but he came to free you from that sin. Repent and be a new creature in Christ. Be born again as Jesus Christ said. Except a man be born again, he cannot inherit the kingdom of God. You need to repent. The Bible says Jesus is looking for disciples. You need a little bit of discipline in your life. You have no discipline in your life. Your liberty has taken you to this street. And you know there's going to be somebody dead on this street by the morning. Just like one day you're going to die and I'm going to die. The Bible says prepare to meet God. You need to make yourself ready to meet God, people. You made yourself ready for tonight by coming to the mission. But have you made yourself ready to meet a holy, righteous God? Time to repent and believe in Jesus Christ. Stop playing games with God. Heaven or hell when you die. Heaven or hell when you die. You want forgiveness? It takes repentance. Repentance and then you will have forgiveness. You don't have forgiveness without repentance. Make sure you understand that very clear. And since most of you are drunk, I will talk your language. That is, if you don't repent, indeed you're going to burn in hell. That's drunk for you're going to burn in hell. You're not set free. What do you have against white people? You ought to be thankful for white people. You live in this country. Be so thankful. Don't be a racist. Don't be a racist. It's a, Fred Jordan is a white guy and he's going to feed you. God's using a lot of white men. Don't be so racist. Why don't you go call Jesse Jackson and have him go over and give you some money. Why don't you go have uh, Al Sharpton come on over and help clean you up. Don't no, stop being a racist. Next thing you're going to tell me is Jesus was black. Next thing you're going to tell me is God's black. It doesn't matter what color of skin Jesus Christ is. His blood is red. His blood is red. His blood is red. My mother loved me. She taught me well. She taught me not to take drugs, not to drink alcohol. God bless my mother. I'm thankful for my mother. I know who my mother is, and I know who my father is. Can you say that? Huh? Stop taking advantage of God, people. Stop taking advantage of the mercy of God. Drugs and alcohol will do you wrong. Repent and believe in Jesus Christ. What a glorious God we have to give us his son for your sin. But you need to repent. You girls need to start reading the Bible, getting serious about God. Stop serving the devil. Stop serving your flesh. Look at where sin has brought you. Sin's brought you here 
The Bible says sin is for a season. And your season is just about over before you die and meet this God you think you know. Oh, nobody here is saying that God doesn't love you. The problem is you don't love God. Repent of your sin and turn to God. As Jesus Christ told the woman caught in adultery, go and sin no more. Time to repent and know the Jesus Christ of the Bible, people. You've been told about the love of God over and over and over. We're here to balance out that teeter-totter and tell you the flip side. The Bible says God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day of every week of every month of every year, God is angry at the wicked. More people go to hell than heaven. That's Bible. Jesus Christ preached more on fire, judgment, eternal flame than grace and mercy. Today, the kingdom of God is not only at hand for you. Today, the kingdom of God is in your face. Repent now. Today is the day of salvation, sinner. Cry to God now. I normally, uh, when I go out and preach, have bodies with me, brothers that want to come out. I've uh, also been known to travel with an entourage. Uh, oftentimes when I go places, uh, there's uh, 12, 14, up to 35 men who want to go out and do things. Some come with the purpose of, of working as a team and, uh, and uh, getting the job done. Some just come out of curiosity. Some just show up because I'm in their city. It doesn't matter. If you wish to join us, we're going to keep you busy. And so we work with a lot of different churches. We have churches that will take care of us, other churches that will feed us, and other churches that will uh, maybe drive us. And so we do work with a lot of different people as I do. I think we should work with many people. There are street preachers out there who have been alone. And I question why. In fact, there's a, probably a reason they're alone. There's probably a reason why they're not married. There's probably a reason why they can't hold a job. It has nothing to do with their stance with the Bible. Maybe it's more of a personality problem. If you drop me off in Salt Lake City and come back in two weeks, I'll guarantee you the Lord will have four people with me. It happens. I'm confident in God that that can happen because people see you out there, they want to get involved. Even some of the Mormon cities that we preach at, Mormons will help us do what we're doing. So I don't have a problem going out there with a group of men. Jesus did. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus taught a group of men on how to preach. And when you preach with us, you have a purpose, a vision. He told them where to go, what cities to go into in Matthew 10. He told them what their message should have been. And so he kept everybody in marching orders as to what to do. And so when you're by yourself and the Lord wants to lead you, that's one thing. When you work with a group of guys, you can be very powerful. And let me bat cave where I do most of my special effects stuff and um, you know as I made this late last night I was thinking um, I hope to God this ajars somebody's reality that uh, all of their works look as gross as this you cannot work your way to heaven your deeds can't do anything this is in my opinion what God thinks of a rosary this is, in my opinion, what God thinks of their sacraments and, and, and confession on Saturday. So um, I realize I'm going to look real stupid out there today, but my motive is to wake the hell these people up. And uh, I hope I wake the hell them up. And uh, unfortunately, we live in a society where they need to be shocked. People can have 300 uh, channels on TV and get bored. And so... Uh, uh, hopefully this will wake them up when I wave it and quote from Isaiah 
that uh, their works are as filthy rags. And uh, last night when I was playing with this and taping this and working on this, my prayer is that these people would wake up when they see this prop. And uh, this is um, this is what I made, and hopefully God will utilize it. One of the venues that I go to often is religious venues, and it's it's uh, that I take more personal. People say I'm an ex-homosexual because I preach against homos, or I'm an ex-alcoholic because I go to Mardi Gras. The sin that really gripes me is when a church or a religion takes God's name in vain. And so I go out of my way to preach against religions, be it Mormons, uh, Muslims, uh, Catholics, uh, be it uh, you know gurus, if uh, the Dalai Lama shows up, uh, it doesn't matter who the religion is, uh, we have a message for them. Most of these religions have a form of Jesus Christ, but deny him in the Bible. And so uh, I go out of my way to preach against the, these religious people who think they're going to be saved, who think they know Jesus Christ. And so uh, uh, many of them have lied. And uh, over the years, I've got a chance to speak to the brass of that particular religion. They come out to try to confront us. And so uh, uh, we've caused them a lot of grief in certain cities. And uh, so religious people, I go after because they take God's name in vain. And that I take more personal than a drunk on Bourbon Street or the homo who's prancing down the street with a pride sign. Was I? Was I supposed to bring some candy? Is it trick or treat day or something? Is this Halloween? Is this is this what's really going on with the Catholic Church? Huh? Don't take it from lesbians. Maybe there's a reason why the church doesn't want women to be priests. Do you endorse lesbians like this? Huh? Oh, well, that's not a woman. I think I think she's trying to be a man. I mean, uh, you think that's a woman right there? Who are you kidding? Are you trying to be a man too? No, I am a man. In fact, I'm exactly the way God created a male to look like, talk like, think like, walk like, smell like. This is real right here. You're a scab. You're a phony. You should. You're a lesbian. And uh, God considers you to be an abomination. What a pervert. You want to see the image of what God created a man to be? It's right here. You're a lie. You're a living lie. Maybe there's a reason the Catholic Church wants to just boot you out. Get used to it because God's going to put you in a hell fire. So you endorse lesbians to actually speak from the pulpit? Are you mad? Do you? Huh? Oh, yeah, God. No, did, did God make Hitler? God made Hitler too. He made Hitler. He made Hitler. So, so God makes evil, is what you're saying. Well, well, then you chose to be a lesbian, didn't you? No, I didn't choose to be a lesbian. I am not a lesbian. But you're standing for lesbians. Absolutely. The Bible says, He that justifieth the wicked and he that condemneth the just, even they both are an abomination. You're just as guilty before God as being a lesbian. I will take them. Oh, and you will. will. Absolutely. It's your choice. It's, it's choice. your choice. Bad choice. Stupid choice. Nope. Uh, did Jesus Did Jesus Christ have uh, uh, any female Jesus disciples? Yep. Our Lord. Who? Absolutely. Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene. Uh, she followed him, but she wasn't part of the uh, discipleship the program. Of the no. Phoebe, Why does the Bible say a woman shouldn't teach? Huh? That's only one I mean, there's so much you can have against this church, but women's place is not the pulpit. No, it's not. No, it's not. The Bible says a woman is a weaker vessel. You are the weaker vessel. Yes, you are. You're weak. You're emotional. She can't answer questions. She gets too emotional. You are the weaker vessel. Yes, you are. Oh, he has. The problem is you just got a hardened heart. You should grow long hair, as the Bible says. You're old 
you're bitter and you're soon going to meet the same God you say you know. You, you're going to soon meet the same God. You believe a lie. You, you're no different than the lesbian in the parades. Isaiah, the prophet, says, your works are as filthy rags. This is what your rosary looks like to God in heaven. This is what your confession on Saturday looks like to God from heaven. This is religion. This is the word of God. Amen. This is what we're going to be died and judged by, not this. This is what your sacraments look like to a holy God as per the prophet Isaiah who said your works are as a filthy rag. As a filthy rag, that's what you look like to a holy God. This is what you look like when you pray to the Virgin Mary and St. Jude. Your works are are like a filthy rag, a bloody, filthy rag before God. Oh, Isaiah knew what he was talking about when that man was inspired when he said, your works are like filthy rags before God. Shame on this church. You've taken God's name in vain. You think God is impressed with all of your works, your righteousness, this is what you look like to a holy God. When he said it is finished on Calvary, there's no more you can do. You can't earn your way to salvation. Your works, women, are as filthy rags before God. This is what a rosary looks like, right here. This is what a rosary looks like. Oh, if Mother Teresa were alive right here today, she'd be begging you not to worship Mary. When you bow down to an idol, this is what you look like. Gross, filthy, unclean. That's what your works look like to you there, Catholic. And you believe this. Start for yourself. No, I'm talking for on behalf of God. I'm talking on behalf of God. The second commandment tells you don't bow down to any idols. You don't know the God of the Bible there, old timer. I'm speaking on behalf of God because you're surely not going to hear it coming from that building. This is filthy, isn't it? This is disgusting, isn't it? This is disgusting, isn't it? You have no idea what you're doing when you pray to the Virgin Mary and not God. This is what your religion has done to you. This is your tradition there, woman. Time for you to repent. Your works are as filthy rags before a holy God. Nothing going on here, people. Just talking about the good news of Jesus Christ like any other normal Christian does. Without Jesus Christ, you're going to burn in hell. I realize you've seen us before. Not that big of a thing. You're being lied terribly. By who? Because I believe the Bible? Because I believe the Bible? Huh? What is the greeting that God sent to the Virgin Mary with the angel? What is the message? We don't pray to the Virgin Mary. We don't pray you don't. to the Virgin Mary. Jesus said, Jesus said when you say a prayer, you say, Our you Father. You say, Our Father, you not Hail Mary. You wrong. don't know the God of the Bible. I this is what you look like when you pray to the Virgin Mary. This is what you look like. Shame on you. Wicked. You're filthy. You're filthy. You are spiritually a bastard before God. God looks down at you and says you're nothing more than a bastard. Other than that, you people have a wonderful day here in Anaheim. You still here? Are you still here? Mary had other children. Mary wasn't a virgin her whole life. You reject that. You reject that. Your works are as filthy rags before God. This is what you look like when you carry that scapular. 
Shame on you. Isn't this so disgusting? Isn't this so pathetic? This is what you look like before God when you are banking on your works to save you. You're actually flipping off Calvary. You're flipping off God and what he has done for you on the cross. You should be sorry, woman. You should be very sorry before God. You should be very sorry before God. Speak respectfully to her. Have her respect God. Have her respect the word of God. Right now, she gets no respect from God nor me. You were going to call me an a-hole, weren't you, old man? You were going to say a-hole to me, weren't you? You need to watch your language. You reject a holy God. Well, has Isaiah the prophet spoken when he says your works are as filthy rags before God? This is what your religion looks like? This is the word of God here. This is what Isaiah the prophet said to the religious people of his day. Your works are as filthy rags before God. And that saying still holds true today. This is what your sacraments look like before God. This is what your man-made commandments look like before God. Filthy, wicked, unclean. You have more faith in those sacraments then you do a holy, righteous God. You've been duped. You've been lied to. Somebody has lied to you. People like this right here will send you to hell. You consider her sacred. Mother Teresa is burning in hell. The Bible speaks of heaven or hell. Nowhere does the Bible speak of purgatory. Nowhere does the Bible say to baptize babies. <laughs> babies don't have a, a, a devil inside of them. Your works look like filthy rags before God. This is what your scapular looks like. This is what your prayer to Mary looks like. This is what your commandment of men look like. Your works look like filthy rags before God. This is what your scapular looks like. This is what your prayer to Mary looks like. This is what your commandment of men look like. What did you do with your statue? Did you bring a statue this year? I don't know. I'm running out of them. You got, you got an extra one by, on by chance? No, well, yeah, I got a lot of them. But, uh, you do? Well, then bring them over. I'll take care of them for you. I, I, I know you will. You still bowing down to Mary? I don't. Uh, Jesus, mother. Yeah, did you ask your parents for prayers? Uh, when they were living, yes. What now that now? they're dead, no. Okay, so that's where we differ. You know, you know what the word necromancer is? You forget it. I don't know. Uh, necromancer is somebody who communicates to the dead. Yeah. I mean, you might as well go to a palm reader. Okay, yeah. Well, the palm reader made that up for you. No, it's in the Bible. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 18, fifth book in the Bible, okay. 18th chapter. Uh, we don't get everything from the Bible. Do you agree on that? Ah, uh, yeah, that, the Bible is plenty. And, and if you go beyond the Bible, this is what you look like to God. This is... Filthy, unclean rag is what you look like to God. That's what the Bible says. When we are two things, what about your soul? What does that look like to God? Well, right now my soul is pure because I believe in the shed blood of Jesus Christ. At least you know your soul and body, right? Absolutely. Okay. Forget the body. It's their soul that we're going to say. Well, the Bible says soul, body, and spirit. There's a three component there. You okay. kind of forgot about that spirit because you got a bad spirit. The Bible says your works are like filthy rags before God. That's what Isaiah the prophet says. If most of you had a Bible, you can read what he says in the sixth chapter. Dealing with religious people like you. This is what it looks like when you pray the rosary. 
This is what it looks like when you walk around with a scapular. This is what it looks like when you think you're going to go to confession on Saturday and God's going to forgive you your sin because you say a Hail Mary. Isn't this sick? Isn't this wicked? You might as well pray to a tree. This is what you look like. This is what you look like right here. You look like this right here. You look like this right here. This is exactly what you look like. Shame on you. Shame on you. This is what you look like. This is exactly what you look like right here. This is exactly what you look like. Disgusting. You roll around in this. You despise God. You despise a holy God. Mary's not going to hear you. Mary can't hear you. You reject God. Shame on you. Filthy before the eyes of God. Filthy before the eyes of God. This is what God says. Do you mind if I have that? Do you mind if I have that? Come on, where's your love? I'll trade you. You can have this, I'll have that. Let's make an even trade here. Mary's not going to hear you. Mary, this is what a Hail Mary looks like to God. Sick and disgusting before God. That's what you look like to God. You don't care? That's what you look like to God. This is what your works look like to God. This is what you look like to God. You want to pray yourself into a frenzy. That's what a rosary looks like right there. Yeah, and you're not taking advantage of this mercy right now. When you die, this is what you look like before God. This is what you look like before God. You reject the God of the Bible. This is what your works look like right here. This is what your works look like before God. Oh yeah, you do. You are banking on your works. You are banking on your works. Where's your rosary bead? What's your rosary bead? Where's that in the Bible? Where's that in the Bible? This is what your rosary bead looks like to God. We are loving you. We are loving you. You're just rejecting God's love. You don't know the love of God. You need to start loving God. This is what you look like. Stop doing rosary. No rosary. You're not. He's not hearing you. God's not going to hear you. God's not going to hear you. No, it's not. Where in the Bible? You love this is what your rosary looks like to God. This is what your rosary looks like to God. Show me. Show me where in the Bible. It's not in the Bible. This is what it looks like. This is what your rosary looks like right here. God is holy. Your tradition looks just like this, people. This is what your tradition. God tradition. God Tradition. You want to take it to jail? Go ahead. What difference does it make? You want to take it to jail? Well, he's, he's only acting like a real Catholic. Boy, you guys have a lot of bloodshed under your church. If you knew your history, you got a lot of bloodshed. Deep inside your wicked heart, you know you'd love to kill us. Your church had killed people like me just a century ago. Deep inside your wicked heart, you know you would kill for your church. A lot of bloodshed. 
Repent now and don't worship Mary Temple. That's a lie. This is what your rosary looks like, pal. When you pray the rosary, this is what your rosary looks like. In Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah says, your works are as filthy rags. That's what prophet Isaiah said when he was talking to the religious people of his time. Your works look like this. Your sacraments look like this. What's that? Thank you. I'm a Pharisee. I'm a Pharisee while you come out of that church. They're not only sending you to hell, they're molesting little kids. Your priests are molesting little kids. You, you are getting molested. Get out. Get out. I'm not your husband, woman. Don't talk to me that way. I'm not your husband. What example are you providing? I'm trying to wake you up out of your stupor. You are so brainwashed. You are sleepwalking. I'm trying to wake you up with this. This is what your works look like to God. What's your name? Doesn't matter my name. The name you need to be concerned about is Jesus Christ. My name is Alicia. What's your name? Doesn't matter. I just want to know who you are. Doesn't matter. You can just call me Hey. I'll respond to Hey. Isaiah the prophet said, Your works are as a filthy rag. You have issues with me, you're going to have issues with a holy God because you've gone beyond the Word of God. Well, okay, you, that's the Word of God, right? That's what we're supposed to believe, both of us, right? So, and you are against the Catholic Church, right? Uh, God's against the Catholic Church, yes. But what is your church? Uh, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink His blood, you have no life in you. If you wish to be a cannibalism, man, I suggest maybe you go to some faraway island. If you want to be a cannibal, the Bible says, do this in remembrance of me. He didn't say this is me. You think that that Eucharist is, is the body of Jesus? No wonder there's so many atheists coming out of your church. You guys are into cannibalism. Why are you so angry? I'm as calm as a cucumber. Absolutely I am. Absolutely. Why are you concerned about me, Jack? How come you're not concerned about these people over here? Why are you screaming at Jack? It's called preaching, Jack. It's found in the Bible if you get a chance to read it. I've never heard of the word preaching in the Bible. And that's because you're a Catholic and they don't do any preaching. They teach religion. And Jack, this is what your religion looks like. This is what your religion looks like, Jack. No, you're not. You don't love God, Jack. You despise God, Jack. You're soon going to meet God, Jack. And it doesn't look good for Jack. Your works are as a filthy rag before God. This is what your holy works look like to God. You have more in common with a bloody tampon than that bloody cross on Calvary when Jesus even died for you. He bled for you and you have more concern about your works. That's what your works look like there, pal. This is what your tradition looks like. This is the word of God which speaks against said tradition. Well, has the prophet Isaiah spoken when he says your works are as a filthy rag before God. Before God in heaven, this is what you look like. Before God in heaven, this is who you will be. Most of you Catholics don't even know Mary was not a virgin her whole life. Mary had other children. In fact, the Bible gives name to her sons and daughters. You think Mary's going to save you when you die? You think St. Jude is going to save you? You think you're going to be rescued out of purgatory? Your days are number there, fella. You're going to meet this God you claim to know. And boy, are you going to be surprised. You are going to be surprised when God says to you, 
I never knew you depart from me, you that work iniquity. Wicked and perverted is your tradition, which void out the word of God. You have more faith in your tradition than you do God's word. You have more faith in your tradition than you do God's written word for you and I. And because of such, this is what your tradition looks like. Shame on you. Shame on you. This is what your religion has turned you into. Really? There's kids out here, man. I know what you're doing. And the Catholics, help me! They didn't hurt me! You folks know me! I brought up on myself because I'm a gay man! I am not! Wow, don't get so emotional like a woman. And you attacked the real speaker! And it was proven! Yeah! It was proven! You're dead for God's house! Hey! Hey! You have some more money. Fuck you! All right. Why can't you Catholics be normal like me? Is that asking too much? This is what your prayer to Mary looks like. Isaiah says. Your works are as filthy rags before God. Finish quoting. So 44 says, because the child is barren. But 66 then says. What does that have to do about your tradition and lies? Because St. Paul says, follow me. By what I write, or but why what we say? What does that have to do with what your church says? Your church don't follow Paul. Either Paul or Cephas. You don't follow the Bible. We all follow. Show me where the word purgatory is. Those filthy rags are exactly what your commandments, your man-made traditions, look like to God. You mock the Holy Spirit. There's no Holy Ghost in your church. There's nothing holy in your church. Your priests are molesting boys, and you want to talk to me about holy? You reject holy. Someone threw that at you. Take your crucifix. Dip it in some holy water and get a rabbit's foot, because that's all it is. Nothing more than a, a rabbit's foot. You have more faith in those ashes on Wednesday you have more faith in prayers to Mary. Isaiah said, your works are like filthy rags. Can you give me the second commandment of the Ten Commandments? Close. You get an A for effort, but you failed. What's the second of the Ten Commandments? It's in Exodus chapter 20. That would be to the left. Exodus chapter 20. That is Old Testament, right? Yes. This is where God is giving Moses the Ten Commandments. So it's not, it's not me. I didn't just write that, that last night. It's, it's been in there for quite some time. What uh, verse? Verse uh, Exodus chapter 20. Uh, it gives a list of the Ten Commandments. So Yeah, this, this way you can know what the second commandment would be. Yeah. I know. I have to tell you, you are just filled with the love of Christ. Thank you. I appreciate that. Wow. You need to tell that to the rest of these guys. Isn't this the most loving thing you've ever seen? I can't believe When was the last time somebody ever did a lovely act like this? Jesus was here. This is exactly... No, if Jesus was here, he'd be in there with a whip. No. Be very thankful Jesus isn't here. I thought you were like Be very thankful. Don't give me any ideas, because we still have tomorrow and Sunday. No, I just have to commend you tomorrow for being so much like And I'll be back. I could come with a whip, and if I come with a whip, you're going down with me, too. You know, you're just, you're Wait, humorous. Wait, say that again? You really are humorous. He's ignoring you. I can't answer, you can't answer me, but this is the love of... That's right. 
You haven't seen the love of God. So maybe I should touch little boys. That would be the love of Christ. Maybe if I start uh, 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 touching and molesting little boys, that would uh, that would be the love of Christ, right? Is that is that your your definition of love, woman? You don't know much Bible, do you? Who's throwing rocks? Who's throwing rocks? Who? Absolutely. When God looks down from heaven, I am a blameless saint. I am without sin. I am a saint. Absolutely. No, I know that's Catholic tradition, but no, you don't bow down to me. You should bow down to God. Turn up. So did you find that second commandment? Uh, that's right. So what what goes on? What do you see inside of a Catholic church? God? Statues? Jesus. It's just, uh, that's not... When you, uh, I want to ask you something. When, do you have a picture of your daughter? Oh, uh, yes, I do. Would you say that would be an image? No. Because I'm not bowing. It is an image, but I'm not bowing down to it. Okay, I'm not saying that. Yeah. Do you love your daughter? Absolutely. Who does? I've got pictures of Ronald Reagan. Exactly. But I don't, I don't kneel down and light candles in front of the picture of Ronald Reagan. You're lying. We can walk into any Catholic church. I could tell you by my own word, I do not bow in front of anyone. The Why do they have a pad to kneel down in front of the statues? Like I said, there's a lot of people that make mistakes in the world. That's not a mistake. It's a second commandment. It's a mistake. Number two. Now the problem Number two in God's commandments. You're right. You're right. So it's not a mistake. Mistakes kind of forgetting where you leave your keys. You forgot to feed the dog. No, you're right. That's a mistake. No, you're right. You're right. I'm, I totally agree with you. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Okay. Now. To say people that never knew nothing about the Bible itself, there are people like that, right? This is why God gave us his word. Absolutely. So you could say like in within your own group, not everybody knows about the Bible, right? Oh, no, they, everybody should know the Bible. Does everybody know it? They should know it. I'm just asking. Do you have a girlfriend? Yes, I do. Has she ever written you a letter? Yes, she has. Have you read that letter? Yes, she has. So you'd read a letter from her, but not God's love letter to you? I do, I do read it. Well, then you should. If you believed in God, you should read the Bible often and quite yeah, quite often you'll be inspired by it. But what I'm, what I'm trying to ask you, I am inspired by it. I, I preach the word every single day. But but you didn't even know what the second commandment was. I didn't. Isn't that I, sad? I, I don't know. I, you're right. I mean, don't you know what your girlfriend likes and doesn't like? Uh, no. Yes, you do. If no, you spend time with her, you do. No, I do. Okay? I spend time with my wife. I can tell you what kind of flower she likes, what kind of ice cream she likes, what things she dislikes. If you have any knowledge of God, you'd know what he doesn't like. The second of the Ten Commandments deals with graven images. Right. You love your mom. What I'm trying to tell you is... Grab a number, I'll be with you next. Right now, stare at this while I work with him. What I'm trying to tell you is, everybody makes a mistake. Mistake? Like you keep I, using that word. That's not a... That's the second commandment. Like I said, not everybody knows the scripture itself. No, but not everybody knows about the Roman Catholic faith. Yes, there are people that made mistakes that keep on making the same mistakes. Sin, not mistakes. Okay. Sin. Okay. That keep on sinning and keeping the same mistake over and over and over again. Which is why we're here to show them that sin. You want to show me where the word Pope is found in the Bible? Huh? You want to... It's not going to bite you. You want to you take the book? Look, does it say to preach hate? You, does it say to preach hate? Year. Hang on. Year. Hold your turn. Year. Wait your turn. What is the greatest commandment? That you love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And if you love God, you wouldn't bow down to any images. What, what's, okay, but you haven't answered the full. No, that's... Uh, that's, also love thy that's number two. And I'm loving you. Your house is on fire, and I'm banging on the door telling you to get out or you're going to burn. And you want to just sleep in bed. Okay. I am doing my job. I'm loving my neighbor. You just are in a stupor, that's all. Any other questions? What do you have against the God of the Bible? Huh? You got a question there, blue shirt? They can't answer, so 
why are you why are you so sure that we worship and adore statues? Uh, have you seen the kneeling pads and the candles? Do you realize in the Vatican they have a statue of Saint Peter? I've been there. And they've had to replace his foot because of all the kisses that you Catholics have done, and you wore off his foot. And That's called worship, man. That, that is worship. That is worship. No. That's breaking the second commandment by both the spirit and the letter of that law. Don't think there's anything there. It's Clinton didn't think he was committing it's, adultery either. Homos story. don't think they're sinning. Catholics saying they don't worship they idols. Worship that almost God. puts a smile on my face. It's so funny. And Jacob, the one true God and him alone. So Mormons believe in God too. No, they believe that God, they have, they're kinotheists. You're just like them because you've no. outgrown the Bible. The you've just outgrown the Bible. Uh, the Bible says without a vision, my people perish. You need to have a vision. There needs to be a purpose of why you're going there. If there isn't a purpose or a reason, you might just be holding a sign, well, what am I doing for the Lord? I don't know if I'm really doing. There needs to be a vision or you're gonna fall by the wayside. You're gonna perish. And so uh, before I go out to an event, uh, I, am in, I am in prayer about that event sometimes three months to a year before I even go there. So when I'm there, I don't need to say, brothers, are we prayed up? Man, I've been waiting a year for this event. There's some events I've been waiting four years for. If it weren't for my body that limited me, I should have ran there. I wanted to get there so much and promote what God wants done. But I have a vision. I know what my purpose is. Men of God in the Bible walked into a city, they knew what to say, they said what they said, and they went home. That's the order of appearance. So when I walk into a city, I don't say, I'm here, Lord. Which way do I go? What do I do? Let me feel the people and then I'll kind of know what to say. I know exactly what I'm gonna say, and I pretty much can tell you the turnout of what happens after I said. Why? Because I have a vision. That's why I don't perish. That's why I don't backslide. I've never thought, hey, am I doing this wrong? I've never, that thought has never crossed my mind because I have a vision and I won't perish. You reject a holy God. You reject a righteous God. Jesus Christ said when you pray, say, Our Father. You don't pray to dead people. You don't pray to dead people. That's what your Hail Mary looks like right there. That's what your, that's what your works look like before God. That's what you look like before God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You want to go to hell? You think Mary's going to save you from purgatory? No Pope in the Bible. No, I'm not going. Oh, no, you are going. You're going to be guilty of heresy. Where's the word rosary in the Bible? Where's the word rosary in the Bible? Anybody? Rosary. This is what your rosary sounds like to God. This is what your rosary sounds like to the God of the Bible. You don't love me. You don't even love God. How can you love me? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, Why would Mary pray for you? 
Mary's not omnipresent. Mary doesn't hear every prayer. Only God is going to hear every prayer. You don't know the God of the Bible. You deny the Word of God. You deny what God says. And your works are as filthy rags before God. Before a holy God, this is what your works look like. Oh, right, when was the last time you read the Bible, woman? What'd you read today? What'd you read today? What, why did you read today? Well, you're the one standing around talking to me. What did you read today? Nothing. What did you read today? You haven't answered that question yet. How long have you been here? Huh? I have a question for you. So then, why are you here? Hey, hang on. Don't butt in. I'm running this side of the show. When I'm done talking, I'll get with you next. What did you read today? Huh? Over the years, we've done some big things. And, uh, you know, when God uh, wants an event that's big and powerful, uh, you know, he's going to call people like me from the bullpen uh, so that we can go to these events. And, uh, and you handle these events a little bit differently. Events like the inauguration. Events like uh, Mardi Gras. Uh, a spring break. Academy Awards. Uh, these are events that change uh, uh, whole people. Uh, you know, they'll, they'll change how people will dress and what they wear and fashion statements. It will affect our lives and laws. And so um, we are called to go to these things because uh, they're a big event. And God needs certain people to cover that certain event. For example, we have a, a police department in Los Angeles, and we have a parking permit, a pa parking police. We have a, a, a meter police. We have uh, tons of different officers, uh, detectives in homicide, and then your regular street officer. And uh, if there's a bank robbery and there's some bad guys in that bank, you're not going to send a meter maid to that call. You're going to send a SWAT team somebody who's skilled and trained for that particular event. Well, in God's kingdom, uh, he brings men like you and I uh, who are resurrected to go out to a big event and confront it and preach against it and make God the issue. And so that's exactly what we're doing. There's more to Christianity than just going to church on Sunday. If going to church on Sunday and 10% of your pay is all God wants, then it's easy. And God owes me a big check because I've given way more than 10%. But I do it because I'm honored to. What a glorious God to do so. Since my hand is to the plow, I have not looked back. Uh, anything else you'd like to say? I think that does it, bro.